Hello, and welcome to Anime Dumpster Dive, where we go in-depth on an anime that's been considered trash by pretty much anybody. I'm your host and magical girl mascot, Jake H., and I am joined by my co-host and fairy king, DJ. Oh, fairy king. What is a... I'll take it. My other co-host is. and squirrel demon, Anthony. <laughs> All right. Okay. Squirrel? Okay. Uh, okay. It hurts, but, uh, you know, sometimes the truth hurts. So, all right, <laughs> and our special guest and co-host of the premier anime podcast from the Nerd Blaze, Kobe. Did you forget his name? I forgot. His name? I, forgot. I, was gonna, um, I was doing my best uh, to try and mimic uh, Jeff's Kobe. intro of Anime Ricochet, and I spaced. <laughs> You did. Wow. I was so excited for an awesome nickname. I was like, oh, Fairy King, Squirrel King, I would Squirrel Demon, I'm going to get something really cool here. And I just get Kobe. <laughs> no. God. Now you get um, uh, Co- Kobe. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> yeah. All right. Do we want to redo the intro? <laughs> no. No. Okay. no was, we're already, we're already live here. We're already here. The, the goal was, Mistake. The, the goal was going to be, uh, like, from Nerd Blazer's premiere thing, Jacoby, a.k.a. Kobe, Magical girl, a buff magical girl, or whatever, and I, I screwed it up. I screwed it up. Name my podcast. You just named Premier <laughs> Podcast. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. You no got product <laughs> placement. You got me all nervous. It's the first time we've <laughs> okay, had a guest. Gonna, gotta reserve some time for an ad read, and uh, <laughs> that'll be supported by Kobe's channel. <laughs> uh, so uh, oh, this is good. I'm excited to be here. Good. I'm hey. glad you are. I I'm, I'm, hope I'm making you welcome by remembering your name and giving you a cool nickname. <laughs> but you didn't remember. You're not. You're not. But that's fine. That's fine. All right, Kobe. How about you? Uh, how about you? Tell us more about yourself. All right. Yeah. What um, kind of are you wear, Kobe? Uh, I'm a boxer man myself. I don't. I don't like briefs. Too restricting. Um, I run a, right. a channel on YouTube called Nerd Blaze, where we sample with a lot of stuff. Where our claim to fame is anime rich. A podcast devoted solely to sports anime, where I talk about that with my co-host Jeff, and we have a rip roaring good time. Hey Jeff, shout out to Jeff. Shout out to shout Jeff. Out to Jeff, yo. Kobe, Who's do you think Jeff? have you, have you watched a uh, sports anime that you think should that we should watch? Like, there's one where you're like, that is, I'm not a fan of that. It'd be cool for people who watch bad anime uh, to watch this. Yes, watch Kuroko no Basket. That. Anime is a piece of shit. That's so bad. What I is it hate about? Kuroko no Basuke. It's about a bunch of fucking high school generation of miracles, but it's actually not about them. I mean, it focuses on like the least interesting characters um, about that, about trying to face the generation of miracles, and it's about a bunch of just badness, just bad. Ah, what what sport play? do they play? What sport? <laughs> <laughs> basketball. They play basketball. Oh, okay, but gotcha. You, but if you go into that sport trying to, thinking that you're going to learn about basketball, you won't. You won't at all. They don't teach you anything about basketball. I came away knowing less about basketball than I did going into it. So what you're saying is that it fits it fits our show. <laughs> yeah, it fits I your show. Watch Kuroko no Basket. Yeah, watch the first season of Kuroko no Basket. Maybe you love it because a lot of people do, but I don't know why. I just think it's a trash anime. <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> So okay, we we got a very passionate Kobe there talking about an anime he doesn't like. Uh, what's what's an anime that you do like, Kobe? Best sports Sport- anime, Kobe. Best sports anime that we watch is Haiku. Uh, it's, it's a volleyball anime that is just fantastic from top to bottom. Three seasons of pure excellence. Before is it better than Yuri on Ice. I was gonna say before DJ gets excited, uh, is there either is it girls volleyball or is there at least really strong gay not. sexual tension? There really is not. It's just it's about friendship and camaraderie between just dudes. And is is does it? Would I learn a lot about volleyball when I watched it? When I watch a sports learn, anime, I enjoy um, when they very accurately represent the sport to where I learned something. You're gonna learn a lot about it's it's no baby steps, which is about tennis, but it you're gonna you're gonna learn a lot about volleyball. You're gonna learn all the positions and what's important and why it's important to love volleyball. All right, all right. And how? Yeah. What is your take on your iron ice, big man? Oh, of course, big fan. Even though I, sh- I, I love Uri Nice, but then I show people it, and then like I've showed like two people it, and they they come back to me with like, yeah, but the relationship between Yuri and Victor 
is that really a good thing or is it kind of creepy? And like both of them have said that. I'm like, no, it's it's sweet and it's loving. But then they make arguments against it. I'm like, oh. So like he is in right. a leadership role above him and he's far older than him. And, <laughs> and he's like influencing ago, well, him and he's uh, like, um, yeah. <laughs> so, but oh, I don't know, beautiful sweet. animation. I love your own eyes. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's great. Who doesn't? Anthony. What? Yes, no, Anthony Jake. hasn't seen it. I listened to you guys enough to know Anthony has not seen your own eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I have not seen it. I am res- I'm saving myself uh, for... <laughs> You're phrasing, but okay. <laughs> Anthony wants to be as pure as, pure as fresh snow. As fr- I do, I do. I am a, I'm a pure soul. I, I, uh, my I'm boy. saving myself, so... Eventually, I will. DJ's oh, hold, holding up a uh, body pillow of uh, Victor Nikivarov. I got Yuri too, and Yuri on the side. <laughs> it is that's fun. good. You got both. Sides. You can either be the dominant or the submissive, depending on how you feel. So that's good. <laughs> and that's why I'm saving myself. So. <laughs> that's not my only anime body pillow, Kobe. Which is, and I haven't bought either of them. Which is, <laughs> he's got. I've got Satellite L Bridget as well. <laughs> so I, now I know what to get you for Christmas, DJ. Okay, perfect. Body something, pillows. something from that uh, volleyball anime that I'm going to watch here pretty soon. Mm-hmm. Oh, fuck yeah. All right, Kobe, we, we brought you on because uh, today's podcast is uh, pretty special. La- last podcast, we talked about an anime that you recommended to me, and that was Pola Magi Madoka Magica. Yes. Which is not, it's not a bad anime. It's not. <laughs> Thank you. I, oh, I know this. the grain of this show, it's a good anime. Yes. I think it's one of one of the best anime. It was one of the first anime I ever watched, so I couldn't really understand how good it was until I watched a lot of other anime after that. I was like, wow, Madoka Magica was good to begin with. But watching all these kind of okay anime, it's just like, it knows its shit. Yeah, it's kind of had like the reverse effect. I'm not reverse, same effect, but in reverse for us, where we watched a lot of shit, and then we watched Madoka Magica. It's like, yeah, wow. so I'm sure it's just, it's just only better now. I'm sure it's all good. <laughs> I, I think I, yeah. I uh, for my second watch of it, I think that watching all the crap and then watching it, it really enhanced it. Where I was just like, "Wow!" So yeah, good. I'm I'm glad every time you watch it through, it's just it just keeps getting better. I suggest you guys rewatch it sometime in the future because it's just that good. Well, funny story. Uh, <laughs> we were supposed to watch uh, a particular movie, <laughs> and I might have uh, watched the wrong one. The first ah. time, and I watched the entire show all over again. <laughs> tell me, tell me something, Anthony. Did they redo the animation to make it look more like the animation in the third film, or is it just Madoka Magica again? Madoka Magica, the movie, number one, which if you're on uh, a non-supported website that we choose to watch anime on... Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> It's kind of hard to navigate, okay? So, uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> no, it's um, not. But it's not. It's not it's, at all. It is. It is. It is. It, it, <laughs> anyways, the um, the second go through, you know, I'm a little I'm a little sad on the first movie that they uh, they left out a lot of important stuff. Like, uh, there's no girls can't like girls line, and <laughs> that's um, the. Yeah, go to important stuff that they cut out. You can choose anything that they cut out. It's just straight, straight to girls can't like girls. I girls think like so. Girls. Is it redone? Is the is the animation redone, or is it just literally the series again? Definitely, definitely animation redone. They practically write out all of Hitomi's parts, um, and as far as like the magical girl fights, it's pretty. It's actually pretty good. Like I thought, it was a pretty good mix of the entire show into that first uh, first movie. So. But if there's no uh, Hitomi, there's no, there's no point. I there's know. no point because she's yeah. the main character. She's in it so <laughs> she's, she's in it so much. Uh, Magi, should Hitomi. be called yeah Hitomi Magica. Exactly. <laughs> Hitomi Magica. So. Hitomi Magica. Uh, but other than that, yeah, it was good. I, I would recommend rewatching. <laughs> rewatching. Re-watch the movie. If you don't, if you don't have time to devote to twelve episodes, just watch, just watch that movie. Does an accurate job. Okay. Wait, are you telling me the first the first movie goes all twelve episodes? Yes. Then what's the second? Well, then what's yeah, the what's second, second movie? 
I have no idea. Did you watch I just watched the. First, I only watched the first movie. I thought you. I wasn't watching the second. Movie. I created a mystery. Say, well, you know, I'm already fucked. I might as well watch the second movie too. No, I just skipped right to the third. So what's the second? So the second one is this mystery movie that we don't know what's about if it's not the series. I haven't watched it, so I can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling well, Anthony watched uh, both movies and he has no idea that he did. He watched watch, both movies yeah, I just watched this one five-hour movie. It was, it was, it was, <laughs> it was, it was uh, you know, four hours of my life. You know, there, there we go. <laughs> it had weird credits in the middle of it, but that's not important. <laughs> and I had to click a different link to watch it. Yeah. But still, it, watch it. it did say the website's confusing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> this website. I blame the website. Well, the movie we were supposed to watch for this podcast <laughs> was Madoka Magica Rebellion, the third movie of the uh, the Madoka Magica uh, um, film franchise. And uh, the the MMCU. MMCU. The uh, what you guys? What were you guys' thoughts going into the movie? Like, what were your first impressions and thoughts? Well, I was gonna watch a movie and. I guess I'll watch it. That was my first thought. Nailed it, man. You are always <laughs> always the guy who connects with the layman, DJ. <laughs> oh, movie. Gotta watch it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, this is a movie I'm about to watch. Uh, get some uh, some oh. snacks, and yeah, uh, I'll watch it. Right now, I'm feeling some some hunger. I already went to the bathroom. I'm okay, so everything, yeah. is, everything exactly. is good. Do you sit there going, breathe, breathe, blink, breathe? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I definitely blink. thought about that Shit. a lot. <laughs> I forgot step two. I forgot step two. <laughs> well, uh, you know, as previously mentioned, uh, uh, the first movie didn't give me a lot to look up to. So I was uh, going into the third movie with mixed emotions. I said, if this is just another restyle of this entire fucking show, I'm going to be really mad. Because then I just spent two... I just spent four whole hours re-watching the fucking show when I could have just went back and watched episode one. Um, that was my first impression. The third movie, they're just all in purple, Anthony. That's, that's... <laughs> this was this was my... Uh, uh, I guess my third time movie, but it's been like two or three years since I saw this movie the last time. So I only have the vague recollection recollection of how it made me feel. And I remember thinking, man, I remember being just beautiful, gorgeous, and then sadness. But I didn't know, I couldn't really remember like exactly how that happened. So I was excited to see what the movie would evoke in me going into it. That was my first impression. That's a good answer. Uh, yeah, that's thank a you. good answer. Considering I didn't watch the uh, the anime when it came out in uh, 2011, I watched Madoka Magica when it came uh, like in 2015. Uh, after I finished it, I went on that uh, like craze of oh, like cool, like I really like this sh- anime. I want to know more about it. Like, is it based off a of manga? Is it this or this? And then like I type in Madoka Magica, and the first autofill is movie. And I went oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. So I instantly clicked on it and. Watched like an illegal sub of it, <laughs> and so the uh, the movie came out in 2013, like two years after the original series. Hmm. They were kind yeah, of so that's not that long. That yeah. yeah, that was a uh, pretty fast. Uh, Studio Shaft really uh, capitalized, I guess, on the popularity of it. I liked it. You liked it? I, yeah, I, 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 I also enjoyed it. The end of the episode. Huh? So, no. So you're spoiling the end of the of, of the review, DJ. <laughs> I don't like. You I mean, gave it away. but maybe I didn't like it. Maybe oh. there's more. Maybe <laughs> he got us on the hook. You don't know what it is yet. He could say he liked the music. That was it. Maybe it was just uh, mommy mom Omome or whatever her name is. Mommy Tomoe, <laughs> sir. Mommy Tomoe, best girl. Don't insult her. Best girl. Man, best, my favorite yeah. part about Magical Girl, or I mean Magical Girl, Madoka Magica, is when I watched, watched the first series and I went, I have seen that chick before of, of Mommy. And then in, during our review, Jake goes, I have a figure of her. And I was like, that's where, that's where I'd seen her before. <laughs> she, she has been ingrained in your mind for quite some time. Yeah, uh, yeah that every figure. single time. I got Kobe a Hamura figure for his birthday. Hey. Amra from Sekiray, nice. It does, and it's in pieces. It's very difficult to, 
to keep her together. Yeah, it's really cool. It has like she has like her golf club and her guns, and they're like detachable. She has different faces that you can put on, and it's all very cool. difficult to put together. I, I'm convinced the pieces don't fit together because it's just kind of in like <laughs> it's, in, it's in like a little like bucket like I have on my shelf because like I can never get a second. You know, that's a that's a cool character. I love him. Yeah, he's a great arc. From girl to guy, or guy to girl. What does he go through? It's guy, guy to girl. No, it's it's guy to you. Don't know what he is because that's like yeah, the, guys, that's his big. Yeah. We're off topic. <laughs> no, 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 no. We're anime <laughs> dumpster <laughs> guy. Okay, we're not off topic. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing is off limits here. Is what I'm learning. Okay, yeah, that right. is true. Okay, so what do you guys talk about first in your podcast? Well, that for anime. Me. Bad anime. Oh, okay. Bad oh. anime, but we've made bad anime, but we made an exception to uh, talk. Basically, we started to watch a good anime towards the end of the currently airing anime season to give us a break from the bad anime that we've been watching. So we chose Madoka Magica, and we all liked it enough to decide that we were going to watch Rebellion and give our quick little recap and review of it. Cool. Speaking of that, so uh, let's go ahead and... Uh, I'll go ahead and intro it, and we'll jump right to spoilers. Sounds good. Do it. Oh, boy. Hamura Akame is a new student who has just been transferred to... Wait a minute. What? Haven't we already seen this before? And that's how I'm going to end that intro, because that's exactly how I felt (laughs) watching the intro to this. When did you write that? (laughs) When did you write that? Just now. Just now, maybe. (laughs) Improv. Didn't even write it down. Oh, man. No, no. I literally went with the first thought process that I had when I went, when I was watching it the first time was, wait a minute. I've seen this, but not from this angle. Wait, what? (laughs) I got, I was beyond confused when I watched it the first time. But I was still confused when I watched it the third time. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's, it's very confusing film. <laughs> yeah. It is. Yeah. All right. So uh, okay. let's go ahead and let's dive on into oh, yeah. Puella Magi Madoka Magica Rebellion. Movie number three. Movie number three. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to throw up that spoiler tag now. So, mm. okay. The, uh, the opening scene instantly had me going... This is movie budget. This is what the studio did with the movie budget. The oh yeah, yeah. It, the yeah. art looks so oh. good. It's crazy, so good. creepily beautiful, hauntingly beautiful. That's the best part of the whole thing is how good it looks. The uh, I I think they do they do a good job because uh, holding back that like it's not painfully obvious to the viewer that the world's different. I mean, like, the world's different, but, like, it kind of plays with that role that it's not the same Madoka Magica that you watched. Mm-hmm. So you're, you're, you're kind of in that, like, oh, this is kind of a, this is the new world that got created type feel. You start watching it, and you're like, here we fucking go. This is, like, this, I have no idea what's going on. <sighs> Why me? Why are they doing this to me? I know they're doing it on purpose, but come on, guys, come on. That's how I felt. Come on, isn't that exciting though to be to be thrown into a world you're 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 vaguely familiar with, but not entirely, and you try to figure it out as you move forward? Yes. Yeah, but I, I the problem was like I knew what was going on. I was like, this is you're the, telling me from the very beginning scene. No, 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 you, no, no. you figured it out. <laughs> I'm like I'm I'm pretty sure this is where we ended, right? I'm like this is where we ended the series at, but then it's like, but is it where we ended? And I'm like, mm, I'm pretty sure. That's how I felt. <laughs> That's the exact opposite because I haven't watched the series in quite some time, and I and I should have probably watched the last episode before it, but all I watched was episode ten of the anime because that that episode is fantastic. So I just watched that, but I didn't watch the ending of it. So it's like I was just like, ah. Oh. Wait, I should have done that, but I'm already invested in this movie. I gotta watch. I'll just, I'll, just, I'll remember it as I go along. Like, it's fine. It's fine. Just keep going. And that, that worked to a little bit of effect, but not, not super. <clears throat> um, again, with this felt, it felt really connected to the series for me. Like it felt like a giant episode instead of like a a lot of anime movies kind of have that. Here's a here's a plot line that will never be addressed again and kind of has like characters doing out of character things. 
But this one, it like you can tell, it's it's clearly meant to be a sequel to the series, and it yeah. it has the same feel to it. I think that, um, they th- I think that that was a good choice, but I also think it was um out of convenience, like out of laziness, almost that they did it that way. Um, not laziness, but out of they they didn't need a plot, right? They didn't need to come up with their new plot a new plot for this because they weren't focusing on making a new plot. You know what I mean? I'm pretty sure this is more a like anime showcase, like a animation showcase than, than a movie. You know what I mean? That's, it really feels like that at some points. Um, cause it's just gorgeous. And there's, it, it, there's as much plot in this whole movie as there is in like one episode of the series. So like it's, it moves very, very slowly. And they don't get a lot done in the time that they do have as far as plot goes. And I think I if totally, they made totally their agree. own plot, actually, if they made their own plot, it would have been really bad because it's like they're, they're moving so slow on this brand new plot. We have no idea about, but because we have the, um, the backing of the series, it really works because we're like, okay, yeah, we've seen this before. This is, this is the, the end where we ended before. Okay, I can work with this. Rather than like having your head mixed in a new plot when really they're not spending that much time on plot would have been really, really terrible. I agree with the sense that there isn't a lot to plot. I remember walking away from it. It's like, wow, you can really sum up what happened in this in about two lines because it, it really nothing a lot happens. But what I liked about this movie itself is that the way they framed it, I think there was a – when you said like – maybe a little bit lazy storytelling. I think there was a lazy way to do this movie. And that's by focusing on if, if, if this movie focused on someone like Madoka instead, but instead they focus on the most interesting character in its center yeah. and who was interesting throughout the show. And who's interesting and who's most interesting in the movie is, is Hamura. And by framing it around Hamura's perspective itself, I think it create it, it makes this, um, a real simple plot line of simple story and makes it a really deep character study, which, which I really admired. It's smart too because I'm. It, it, Hammer's got to be the most popular, like from fans, right? For after watching the series, so when they make a, a, a sequel, it's focused on her. That's smart. They're focusing on the per- person that the fans liked. It's got more mommy in it too, and people liked her, and she wasn't in the series that much. Mm-hmm. I think it was smart in both those regards. Well, a lot of this movie feels like pure uh, pure fan service. For oh uh, yeah, for stuff like yeah, there's plot connecting it, so it doesn't. It's not fan service that comes out of Norin. You're just like, oh well, that's just made for that. <coughs> um, but there's parts where, I mean, uh, there's parts where you you know that people wanted to see that, and then they made it happen, which is awesome. The uh-huh. uh, like in our podcast, I said they should be more fights. The fights in this are phenomenal. Yeah, like Magical oh my God, Girl on man. Magical Girl fighting. Yeah. There, I said there wasn't enough in the series. And they they bring it in this fucking thing, like in a way that's the, believable too. Like yeah. the, the fights are, they, they make sense. <laughs> yeah, like, it's it's I like I like that they added fights. Um, the whole thing, the 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 change in animation is they they put the budget into the animation. This thing is fucking gorgeous. Yeah. Like the whole movie is gorgeous. Like a lot of times nothing's going on and I'm like, okay, this is great. The only problems I have with it are like, sometimes there's like scenes where they're just kind of like talking to each other. They're exploring relationships that we already know a lot about. And they're like rehashing relationships that we already really went deep into in the series. And I'm like, okay, we don't really need to do this. Either get back to like the fever dream visuals or like some fighting, like just cause when they're just doing nothing and they're just walking around the city, it's phenomenal. Like nothing's happening, but it looks amazing. Well, I think, they, and that's what uh, they ne- they needed to add some of those interactions in, though, be, like to really hammer in the uh, like most of those interactions are Hamura and other magical girls, more specifically Madoka, and you you they really hammer that those feelings in for her so that the ending of it doesn't hit you out of nowhere, like you you kind of you get where Hamura is coming from, like with her obsession. Yeah. I mean, I, I I thought the ending was worse than the ending in the um, the actual series. I thought this one more so did the whole anime jump the shark ending. It didn't really get all the way there like a lot of anime do, but it did definitely go zero to sixty way more than um, the series did. I feel like. Yeah, I feel like by the end, maybe you know, it was a little convoluted by the yeah you know, 
by the by the climax, I mean, I, I was I was invested. I'm not going to lie. Th- throughout the entire movie, I was invested. You know, this is a storyline that I was hoping was built up. You know, that um, I mean, they even show as soon as Hammer walks onto the screen with the twin tails. I was like, oh, my God, this is definitely before all of this shit happens. And then, you know, was surprised at the very end. And I think that the the overall resolving factor, you know, in the very end, I, I, I I hate to say that I kind of felt like it fell flat. I just, it was like gimmicky, you know, almost to a point. Like the fact that she took a piece of, I mean, I, I don't want to jump all the way, you know, way ahead, but the fact that she took a piece of Madoka and turned into a, essentially like a succubus. <laughs> well, it, I got again, not to jump all the way to the end there. I'll, I, I, I remember watching this with Kobe the first time. And for, for, at the ending, we both kind of were like, eh, about it. Watching it again, I'm, I, I'm, uh, I'm on the side of the ending. I'm good with it, I but I too. feel like sure. to make it better, I've created my own logical jumps, which should have been in there. You know what I mean? Like, I think it's a great ending if, it's, if what's ha- what I think is happening is happening. But I'm not sure if what I think is happening is happening, which weakens it by a lot. But if what I think is happening is happening, like if they're... If on a second watch somehow that's confirmed for me, then absolutely, it's a it's a pretty solid ending. Well, let's let's go through from the beginning and let's find out if DJ if what DJ thinks is happening is happening. <laughs> oh, all right. Ooh, see that was Look a segue. That I like that, that was segue. a segue. Man, right there. A sexy segue. Uh, you know, I, I no, nothing makes a segue great other than uh, you know acknowledging the segue. <laughs> yeah, the, the top things about any good segue. Uh, yeah, number one. So, like uh, we've said before, we start out with, um, well, actually, we start out with them fighting this weird new creature that we haven't seen before, and then feeding it like a feast. And then it hard cuts to Madoka waking up, and uh, Kyube. okay, I I hate how much this movie makes me appreciate Kyube's appearance, because, like, early on in that beginning part, Kyube is just being cute. Mm-hmm. And there's no close-ups on its weird beady face, so there's no intimidating uh, factors to it. It's just doing cute things like riding a bat, like, like cute little guy riding Madoka's yeah, shoulder, he's just shoulder kind of there. hanging out in a bath, patting Madoka's head when Sayaka and Kyoko are fighting. <laughs> this whole sequence, you're going. You... What the fuck is going on? It, like, yeah, you you have no idea what's happening, but you're like, this looks great. Yeah, <laughs> you're, especially you're, watching I'm, it with I'm, it in such I'm, quick I'm succession, you know. This is definitely, like, one of those ones where, um, like, I, uh, DJ said that he watched Sailor Moon. Anthony said that he, uh, he wasn't really familiar with Magical Girl shows prior. Uh, but this is pure, like, this is a, this is an episode of Sailor Moon. Oh. <laughs> like, the, the, the opening is such a classic Magical Girl type show. Um, with them having, All the like, transformations and stuff, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we, uh, we, they get introduced to Hamra, who goes into their class, and we find out that Mommy knew she was coming in, and again, all this, this whole introduction is such a magical girl trope. Like, oh, here, we're a team, oh, we got a new member, oh, we're all different colors. Mm-hmm. Power Rangers! Pretty much. Uh, then we, we get to a scene that I actually really, really liked, and that was the transformation scene, because not only did it look beautiful, but I thought it did a good job um, showcasing the girls' different personalities. I liked them all except for Madoka's. What? <laughs> she's all innocent. Yeah, she like she, she liked, looked uh... less. I knew that they were going for innocent, but it looked like more. She was like jazzy, you know. And I was yeah, like, that's yeah. not right. <laughs> like she's like, bam, 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 bam. I was like, not exactly what you're going for there. <laughs> Uh, did, you, did you guys notice that during the transformation scenes that uh, Sayaka and Hamura had um, witch frames like thrown in there real quick? Mm-hmm. Like uh, Hamura breaking free of of the witch thing, like that she does at the very end, and then I don't, I didn't, I didn't catch uh, Sayaka's, but no, so it, something similar too, right? It flashes. No, it flashes Sayaka's legit witch name. Oh no way! And oh, I didn't it do does that. the same thing for Hamra. It, there's a quick boom, like, and it's their witch name. I remember that, and then I went, "Oh, there's the the words I can't read her back." Exactly. I was like, there it's they like, are. <laughs> it's the yeah. German words in Japanese. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, one thing that I really like about this too is like early on, they really they really start to pull that sense of imagery that they had from the original series of the labyrinths. 
like the the kind of off putty you know type of um, background imagery and and uh, some of the scenes that were kind of like animated differently. You know, I liked that a, a lot. You know, it was familiar. That's what I liked about it the most. Yeah, the, the well, not only were they uh, they familiar, they were legit familiars, which I thought was yeah. Like you could you could point them out. But you're like, wait a minute, those mm-hmm, are mm-hmm. those are like witch familiars from the original series. Yeah. Like, why are they why are they here? <laughs> Why are we here? Why are any of us here? I I straight up think that the teacher needs to be fired. Uh, oh, that's yeah, the worst yeah, teacher. She's the worst. I'm she's terrible. She's not a teacher. I just think she just walked in one day and started spouting apocalypse nonsense, and they just like, oh, I guess <laughs> she's who we listen to. Because in the series, she was talking about like cooking eggs and shit, mm-hmm. and at the end, mm-hmm. she's of this, she's talking about it again. Yeah. it does not make sense. She's she's she she should have been fired a long time ago. And there should be a teacher review se- session or something like that. I don't know. A job performance evaluation. Like, what are these kids learning every day in <laughs> class? <laughs> How to please your man. <laughs> oh, uh, f- forgot to bring up a kind of a new member to the main cast is Bebe, who hangs around Mommy. Bebe. And yeah. uh, Bebe is hey, Bebe. looks suspiciously hey. like Charlotte. The uh, Yeah, I, I googled the name of the witch that uh, that bites off uh, hey, Mommy's head. <laughs> also, yeah. like, Mommy in this is a fucking badass you're yep. like oh my god oh, i can't help but thinking how did she just get her head bit off by a fucking how did that happen <laughs> she's such a beast how did she just that, what that, yeah, the whole time she oh, I'm like she really forms into like the magical girl leader mm-hmm. like in this where she's like oh she's magical girl senior and uh she senior. I, I i made a joke i made a stupid uh always sunny joke when it first shows her I was like, "Oh, mommy, you've enhanced yourself." Because <laughs> her, her, they, they, uh, some of that budget went to making mommy's boobs bigger. Oh, oh, <laughs> the, the first shot <laughs> yeah, of her, it's did. like, yeah, um, they did. Like, right I know her, 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 the towel. Mean, like, what yeah. was the? Do oh, we need that? No, yeah, but uh, yes, uh, yes, Anthony, yes, 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 we did. <laughs> yes, we did. <laughs> we need it because of my favorite Easter egg in the show is uh, while mommy's brushing her hair, she's humming her theme song. Oh, she's doing that. Hmm. It's so cute. It's yeah. such a nice scene and pleasant. I, I fucking hum my theme songs. So, what is your theme song, DJ? Oh, okay. That, like that, pretty much. Okay, I got it. <laughs> on repeat loop. Oh, here's uh, here's some fan service thrown in. Is while they're fighting the nightmare, they're doing combo attacks. Yeah, I like that. Which I thought were cool. Oh, that's... Wait, you mean when Kyoko creates her, like, vortex and, like, uh, Saika shoots her spear through it and, like, connects to Kyoko's weapon and drags through and creates, like, chains? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is that what you mean? Yeah. That yeah. part was awesome. And, uh, that was rad. And uh, Madoka and Hamura... No, not Hamura. Madoka and Mami fuse their gun and bow together to make, like, a weapon. Yeah, a gun bow. Gun bow. Like, duet finale or whatever, and they fire it. <laughs> Finale. Yeah, and she likes saying that word. That's uh. <laughs> she she took French and she got fin- she got to finale and she went done later. <laughs> I've learned all the French. <laughs> said, I've learned all I need. This is all, all I need. need. The uh, so they're fighting this thing and it's called nightmare, and they basically Nightmare-y. force it into a um. Oh, really quick, uh, because I want to hate on this character really quick. Uh, Kiyosuke makes a girl into one of these things because you know Kiyosuke's trash. Hitomi! <laughs> he turns Hitomi into a nightmare. So Hitomi, like, the nightmare, they, sh- like, herd the nightmare into a room where they then sing a happy little song and feed him food to fuck? dismiss God. it. That part they're making was, a cake part, and they make the world's worst cake with the yeah, worst ingredients you could imagine. Pumpkin? <laughs> it's like cheese. Yeah, pumpkin cheese and the, and raspberries and bl- blueberries. Cheese, pumpkin and melon combination. <laughs> Not really sitting too well with <laughs> the um the thing I thought was weird at one point. Um so I had to look it up, but every time like Bebe would like say something at like mommy, she would call her cheese. Yeah. Huh. And so uh, even and when she talks about turning into cheese too. Yeah. Right? And so that's where mommy goes cheese. Like I'm the cheese, and that that ties in later when I want to bring up something. 
Choose um, the big cheese. So the, the giant and, cake appears, and instantly I'm like, that's the cake Madoka wished for. That's the fucking yeah, cake. Yeah. That, <laughs> <laughs> and then Baby... Yeah, yeah. Then baby's that, that looked like a wooden cake. I wish. <laughs> then Baby introduces her true for it, and I went, <gasps> Mommy, no! <laughs> Mommy, get, yeah, out so out. <laughs> get out of there! Get out, get out. This is unsettling. This is such a joyous, nice scene, but, like, I know that that witch, like, just bit you in half and, like, ate your body, so I can't be completely 100% comfortable with this. Yeah. So, feeding the nightmare, they make it have, like, a nice dream instead, you know, where, like, Kiyosuke... This is, a, this is an animation uh, showcase, like DJ said. Yeah. Because they just have Kiyosuke's, like, shadow start playing the violin, and it's this really yeah, beautiful it's... scene, and you're like, what's happening? You're like, uh, I don't know, but it looks great. <laughs> where? But I like watch. <laughs> Let's see where this goes. I feel. Yeah. Um. After doing that, Hamura almost immediately goes like, "Oh, so that's what battles were like." Wait, were battles always like this? And you're like, mm, mm-hmm. something's mm-hmm. not something's, right here. Yeah. You're like, Hamura, Hamura knows shit. And so, like Hamura, always. Yeah, pretty much. And so Hamura asks Kyoko to uh, to take her to like Kyoko's hometown. And Kyoko is like, "Yeah, sure, I'll take you to my hometown." And they go on a little like interaction. This is an interaction that we didn't really get much of in the original series. Uh, we got a few of them like making deals to fight like that giant witch, but other than that, like they didn't really talk much. And so I thought this was neat. To just have two, like, again, fan servicey is having characters interact with each other who didn't really get the chance to interact in the series. Very true. Mm-hmm. But to such good results. Yeah. I mean, it's fine. I'm fine with that. This, this whole scene, you're like, what? What's going on? It's very, uh, it kind of pulls you in. This this one, for sure. The first half of this is pretty darn good, I gotta say. Yeah, well, they're, uh, they, they get on the bus to ride to Kyoko's hometown, and they realize that, like it drives by it, like and they hit the stop, and it's a it's a different stop than Kyoko remembers, and so they try it again, and the entire time they're trying this, they're like the world's looking darker and more like a more like the witch scenes. But that's the only thing that's wrong is that the bus won't stop. That's the only thing that's amiss in this whole thing. <laughs> yeah. Everything like my else, classmates don't this... have faces anymore, but this is weird. yeah, <laughs> this is the that's, weird part. That's what's so great about it. It's just because, like, the way these movies are structured, you, you see those scenes, and you're just like, is this an artistic choice, or is this actually yeah. happening? Like, yeah. is this like, yeah. should we be worried about this, or is it just a fun little artistic thing? Are these characters not supposed to have faces? Like, I guess, we don't know. They're like melting cheese faces. <laughs> yeah, it's gross. Speaking of, speaking of that part, um, so they eventually get off of the uh, bus, and they decide to walk to the location, and as they're walking there, all the bystanders are, like, following them, and they turn around, and on their faces are all masks of Hamura and Kyoko. And I'm like, that's disturbing as hell. Like, that's a quick jump to disturbing. They're just like, yeah, yeah nothing's wrong here. Um, <laughs> let's go home. Well, Hamura even goes, maybe we shouldn't talk about this anymore. Don't yeah. tell anyone else. This is, you know, uh, a little weird, but I'll, I'll let it slide. Yeah, and the thing is, too, that they were trying to leave Makahara City. That's what it's called, right? Makahara, Makahara the, the or something city. like that. Yeah, that's the main city, and they keep they just, just they can't leave it. They keep hopping on the station, and it doesn't take them to where they need to go or anything like that. It just keeps them within the city. So that was pretty badass too. Do you, uh, I don't know how familiar uh, familiar you guys are with like different anim- uh, anime studios, but Studio Chef is kind of famous for one pose, and they do the pose a couple times in this. And it's the Studio Chef head tilt, and it's the tilt that is like. Nobody, nobody can move like that because your neck would break. The, the crazy person tilt. Yeah. yeah, I've seen that before. Where, where is? Is there another place that's in? Um, it was Studio Chef. What else did Studio Chef do? They did uh, Monogatari. It's really, it's really prevalent in Monogatari. If you saw any of that, I've never seen Monogatari. Uh, maybe you've good. seen scenes of it. No, not maybe. I'm sure you have. So uh, Hamra then goes like Hamra goes. This is all, this is different, like an area that you can't escape, an area that it has like weird magic to it. This is a witch's labyrinth. And she then like takes off her glasses, she unbraids her hair, and she's badass <laughs> Hamura. Yeah. Physical transformation. <laughs> she's, like, she's like, you are what you wear. And so then she, she's like, I'm going to wear my 
my wear my ass kicking outfit. So uh, then we get to a scene where Hamura, Madoka, um, Mommy, and Bebe are all having tea. Creepy. Bebe is weird. Fun, cute. fun tea time. It's fun tea time. Bebe is a like a Very weird fun. cute. I, I I put like like off puttingly cute. Oh, right, he like, needs a muzzle. You, you start like, going. Nah, I, don't I don't think. You, she, you, I, I think mean, that's necessarily a good guy. You're like, yeah. I don't, I don't trust it. Yeah, for all I know, she could be sitting there spouting off, "I'm gonna eat mommy when you guys all leave." La la la. Yeah, but it's hard for me to to be so against uh, Bebe there when Cube is like sitting like also in the corner right behind it. So I'm like, ah, which which Fucking small evil creature yeah. do I not trust? Well, like, yeah. which one is worse? Yeah. That's another thing. Bebe and Cube don't like each other. Like in the the interactions, like Kyobe's like hiding. No, Kyobe, baby's like hiding behind mommy's leg, going bah, 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 like barking at it. And so, like, I guess there's kind of a tell. Like, if you go, wait a minute, Kyobe's Kyobe's bad news. Maybe this. But he doesn't give you any reason news. to know these bad news in this one. Yeah, not because yet. where we left him, he wasn't really evil. Yeah. Yeah. True. Is Kube actually evil, or is he just doing what's right in the universe? He's evil. He's the worst. I hate, uh, him. I hate him so much. Very possible. He's just doing what's right. Yeah, oh come on! The end of this. The end of this movie forgets solidified. I how much I hate him. Um, well, that's the end. We don't know that at this point. Yeah, we don't know yeah, that. Yeah, at this no, point. that was. Totally and you also sad. don't know if he wasn't doing what was right at the end. Okay. So he's he's uh. Anyway, so they haven't tea fun time. And Hamra starts quizzing mommy, like, how long have you known Bebe? Which is the worst idea, because she, she tells Kyoko, it's like, okay, let's not w- raise any waves, let's be calm, let's just, just pretend like everything's fine. Her very next scene, when when did you meet Bebe? When, when <laughs> like, like interrogating her. So you know her for a while, right? Yeah. Hamra, be cool. Like, you um, exactly her how long cool. have you known her, though? I mean, I know you've known her for a while. How long is just a while? Asking. Just asking, asking. no reason one, whatsoever. Like, come yeah. on, Hamra. You're smarter than that. Let's say hello here, guys. <laughs> like... So Hamra waits for mommy to leave the room and time stops. And she, this is what I thought was really cool is anything she touches like is in her like time field. Yep. And so that she picks cool. up Bebe and it's like, I know you're a witch. I know you're a witch. And then she moves her hand to drop her. And so Bebe just stays there and then she like chokes it into like the wall. Which I thought it's was a neat. Great, it's a great little one second clip of just like, man, this animation's beautiful. Like, drop, yep. grab, great. Yeah. One thing I wonder with that is so her bullets only move so, so, for so long, right? When she shoots them out of the gun. So uh-huh. while they're in the gun, she's touching them. And then when they leave the gun, she's not anymore. But they still travel a little bit when they leave the gun. Well, it's the, it's like, weird. it's the same thing. It's something moves from the force that I think she gives it. So, like, there's a scene where I actually compliment is that she runs out of bullets, and so she throws the gun, and the gun goes for a little distance and then freezes. So it's mm. it's what she affects with its, like, force. Mm. So she's holding the gun. It goes through the chemical reaction of launching the bullet. The bullet will go as far as it will out of the chamber until it eventually stops into the time. Create a time bomb of bullets. Yeah. So well, let's lead up to that. Um, so Ma, uh, so Hamra grabs uh, Bebe and runs off with her. And at this point, Hamra gives a little synopsis of Mommy's character. And something I thought was I liked a lot was that she says that revealing the truth was always really hard with her around. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we we talked about that on the podcast. Was like what would, what would she have done if uh, if Mommy didn't die? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mm-hmm. So easily, what? Like, come on! Yeah, I don't yeah. get it. it, it How it, do you it, die to a little snake monster so quick when you're actually a badass? She got surprised. She got surprised. <laughs> she she wasn't really that surprised. She had plenty of time to watch <laughs> to that react or not react. Go up to her and gasp, and then it her. especially with, step out of the way with her reaction times in this. Because yeah, so we or just her ability to like plan and know what's about to happen to her and stuff, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm going to tie something around your leg, you know, just in case. Yeah. yeah. I thought that was really cool because all of a sudden in this time stopped world, uh, mommy shows up and it's like, well, I've tied, a, I've tied a ribbon that connects you and me. So now we're... Uh, and everything else. Like, so you and I are uh, 
able to uh, move in this time stop world. And Hamra's trying to. It's so her. great when she looks back and she sees that whole that whole plethora of ribbon. She's like, "Ah, oh, shit!" <laughs> like, "Ah, oh, this was." This <laughs> How did I not notice this and did, giant anything, ribbon on my leg? It's How attached to you, and anything you've ever touched, <laughs> ever. <laughs> so the uh, oh, the scene where she throws the gun is right after she tries to shoot the ribbon off. She shoot, yeah. like she shoot, shoots the ribbon like four times and then just tosses the gun. <laughs> and uh, the fight scene here that happens is it's holy badass. crap, so good. It's so bad. The best fight scenes of any probably anime yeah movie I've seen. Probably in Maybe the TV out of all of Madoka Magic, I think this one's the best one. Yep. Oh, absolutely. I. This is a scene that, like, people react to. Like, those YouTube reactors, like, people, this is like, hey, you should watch this scene. Those people have no idea what the context of the scene is. They just see two two young girls dressed in magical girl fits trying to shoot each other <laughs> to death. But it's a badass scene to watch. We just said, when, when, did the, when did the original series come out? It came out in 2000 and when? 2011. 2011, and we had to wait how long until this one came out? Two years, 2013. Two years. So this fight is a t- is two years. Two years coming. Two oh, years in the making. From the original series, she just locks her up in the ribbon, and they never get to fight. And you're like, oh well, fuck it, we're never gonna see this happen. I like how that's how ha- oh, that's how the fight ends. I like that she locks her up in the ribbon again. She <laughs> <laughs> yeah. should have done that from the beginning. Yep. <laughs> like she knows that she's going to freeze her. She knows she's going to shoot herself. How did she plan that she was going to shoot herself in the face to get her to be worried to freeze time? Or I guess she saw her shoot herself in the face and then she saw her break a ribbon. So she very quickly created a ribbon copy of herself. I don't know. But I like that. It's all luck. Everything that happened was pure <laughs> luck. <laughs> just, just like, oh, I'm glad I shot myself. In, like, I'm glad you moved my hand and accidentally shot through the ribbon. That's great. Oh, I'm glad you were a fake person. That was, yeah, I mean, yeah. I. I knew that the whole time. I, it's I like the whole it's fight like she was a ribbon clone or whatever. What? I thought the entire Ooh. fight she was a ribbon clone. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. then it pans up. It does that weird. It like pans up to her too. So that's it. So kind of like gives she that be ribbon clones. She didn't use that against the fucking snake monster, right? But yeah, the real mom. She's in the peak. She's in peak in performance. Real, it, was, it was a ribbon clone. She just didn't want to be a magical girl anymore. So yeah, she's just like I'm gonna, I'm gonna fake my death. She that is what I'm standing by. by. Yeah, I think Kobe's right. I think Hummer's trying to actually shoot herself in the head, and then Mommy luckily gets her hand, so she accidentally shoots the ribbon. And then Mommy's like, oh, fuck, done, done, done did a bad. Good thing I'm a ribbon clone. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I like that like resolve that like Hamra does for that all-or-nothing move with shooting her head. Yeah. And then Mommy... Then Is that she whole... going to try to reverse time, like... Is that what she's trying to do? I think there. I think she's fully planning on mommy lowering her guard. Like she can't do the time reverse thing anymore, right? She, she, she hasn't tried, at least from my understanding. Yeah. And so she that's where she goes like I'm going to shoot myself in the head. Hopefully mommy's like justice feelings will help like will cause her to interrupt me and I'll find an opening. And, then yeah, she does and if the, not, hopefully I can still go back in time. Hopefully, hopefully if not, power. I shoot myself enough so that I can still function and then reverse time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, like, in the main series, when she died, she woke up, remember? But that was because she was trying to say her wish was to save Madoka. She right? Ne- she never died in the main series. Oh, did she just go back in time? Yeah, she just kept going she, back she in activated time. activated it? Yeah. Gotcha. The, uh... So, so mommy ties her up with a ribbon, and I don't know if this is a nod to the first episode or not. Uh, but Saika saves uh, saves Hamra from being basically interrogated by mommy uh, by throwing a sword, by throwing a fire fire extinguisher, and then a sword into it. And in the first episode, she saves uh, Madoka and Kyube from Hamra by using a fire extinguisher. I was wondering about, like, that's such a weird object to just kind of pull out and throw. Like, why a fire extinguisher in this situation? Because so they explode that has and a lot of smoke. Objects. Like, yeah, I, just, I was wondering if she just has, like, a bunch of them, like, like, like in a bag of holding or something. <laughs> She's like, it's like, what weapon do you have? Oh, I have, you know, I have guns. What weapon do you have? Like, a flint pistol. What do you have? Oh, I have a bunch of fire extinguishers. 
It's like, why? Like, you, you appear something to explode. Like, that's cool. <laughs> I'm hanging out with that guy. He sounds like the party. Who, who needs smoke bombs when you got fire extinguishers that you can stamp? <laughs> uh, oh, we also get, while well, Hammer and Mom are having their conversation, uh, Hammer uh, goes like, we don't fight nightmares. We fight witches. And Mommy's like, we don't, what are witches? We fight, uh, we fight wraiths. And then she's like, wait a minute. What's a wraith? She's like, wait, what? And then I like that. Um, that That's my, I guess, defense of why Mommy is so OP in in this fight. Is that she's had a couple extra years of fighting wraiths instead of, you know, getting her head bit off. Instantly? Yeah. Her head instantly. And fucked up. So no she just problem. Got, she just got better thing. at being, at fighting. <laughs> That's my head canon, is that she's been a magical girl longer. Well, yeah, um, what's her face even says it when she saves Hamura. She says, you, why would you fight her in, in, when she's in at her peak? Form. Yeah, peak form. That, that also Idiot. makes you go, whoa, Idiot. how did she, how did, what does she mean peak form, you know? Mm. It makes her think, huh, it makes you think, huh, does she, uh, does she know something, you know? It's like the fact that uh, she her... She fucking totally knows something. Is, well, is it 8 p.m. on a show. Tuesday, her peak form? I mean, like, don't, <laughs> don't, don't attack that time. It's a one yeah, time exactly. don't attack it's... After she's had her tea, oh, she's ready to go. <laughs> yeah, is it a certain Turned time of day? Tea, or, day? Or is this bitch, does this bitch know something from the past, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah, but the... Oh, we... Oh. Adding on to fan service, uh, I'm sure when the movie came, when the series came out, people were like, "I wonder how some of those witches looked like magical girls, looked as uh, magical girls." And so we get to see Bebe as a magical girl. Yep, right after. I that. like her transfer for, transformation later on. She's like fromage or something like yeah. that, <laughs> and she like Parmesan cheese, and she turns <laughs> into a magical girl. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, like, I just went back so I could have some cheese. <laughs> so, like, like DJ was saying, uh, the uh, Saika definitely knows something's up. And yeah, she's, she's got some knowledge. And we get wow. uh, we get a scene that I freaking love because Hamura's like, "Wait a minute, how like how do you know about witches? Because if because Madoka changed the world, you should you should know what wraiths are, not witches." And mm-hmm. Psycho's like, I wonder why. And her shadows, her witch form. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, oh, that's yeah. so she does the head thing. Oh, right creepy. There. Scary. She does the head thing. Yeah, she does the uh, tilt. She's like, I wonder why. And then you're like, oh, yeah, that bitch Whee! wasn't even in the Wraith world. She wasn't. She disappeared. <laughs> yep. So she, she wasn't even in there. So she really wouldn't know what, what Wraiths or, you know. Because she got a special yeah. case. Like, Madoka gave her... She, she, Madoka talked to her and was like, yo, here's your boyfriend singing. By the way, you're never going to be exist. And she's like, all right. No, she she exists in the Wraith world. She just won't, like, she won't have memories of the Wraith world because she, like, yeah, I don't know if you recall, but Kyoko, Hamura, and Mommy at the end of the series exit out yeah. of the world and they go, what happened to Sayaka? Like, so they know who Sayaka is, just Sayaka, like, Sayaka never has memories of that world. So I guess you are right, but she did exist in that world. She existed, yeah, but she also was like, I don't know, uh, Madoka like removed her from reality a little bit. Yeah, she was like, she, she literally tells her, she's like, you're not going to exist now because that wasn't part of my wish. <laughs> that wasn't part yeah. of my wish, or something like that. Yeah, sorry, but so, you, at least you got to see your boyfriend sing, right? Play, play violin. She's like, she's not play my boyfriend. Violin. Yeah, sing, play violin, same shit. Guys. Sing is the next anime we're talking about. Shut up. <laughs> is it what? <laughs> What's no, Russian singing he, in? He's talking about seeing the movie with the pig. Oh, <laughs> nice. Uh, That's a good movie. Excited, it is. It the, was funny. <laughs> the, uh, the, the After that reveal, Hamura basically breaks down that um, the people who... That the only people who could uh, be here... Like, the only people who could be a witch are people who know that Madoka is a thing. Because... Like, Madoka's here, and Madoka doesn't exist in the Wraith universe. Yeah, what do they call that? What do they call that process? It's called the, something. The Law of the Cycle? Is that what it is? Yeah, the, law of, cycle? Yeah. Yeah. Law, of yeah, the law of Cycles? Yeah, the Law of Cycles is what, um, is what Madoka is in the Wraith universe. And so with Madoka yeah. being here, Homer's like, wait a minute. If they make a fake that Madoka, right. it has to be somebody who knows who Madoka is. Who Madoka is. So it's either... It's a, it has so it to must be Hitomi. She's like, it's gotta be Sayaka. So 
or me? some other party. <laughs> Hatomi. But it's definitely not me. <laughs> or Hatomi. It's uh, definitely not me. Hatomi. <laughs> Hatomi. It is Hatomi. That's the secret. That's the logical jump girls, I was talking about. Girls can't like girls. That's the jump I was talking about. The ending is that that it's Hatomi. <laughs> the uh, we we get so Hamra is riding like this weird like Disney uh, Disneyland ride of horror, where she's riding like this boat, <laughs> and like it's just going through like the conversation. Like she's going through her thought process again. These are heavy hints of that Hamra's the witch at the end of this. Mm-hmm. Because it's like her thoughts are manifested as these familiars, like these paper cut out people. And uh, she still has blood on her face. And Madoka runs up on the bridge. She goes, Hamra! And she jumps off the bridge and Hamra's like quickly rubbing the blood off her face. <laughs> yes. Oh, it's fine. It's fine. Catch up. Catch up. Anything? It's... I was eating fries. What? what? Nothing. Nothing. And and so they have a they have a cute little conversation. Again, I, I feel like the these... Uh, these conversations between Hamura and Madoka are, are are truly meant to build up the finale of the movie. Because, like, Madoka, again, I, I love Madoka. Not as much as Hamura loves Madoka, yeah. but man, I love Madoka. Nobody, nobody loves Madoka. Yeah, you nobody know, loves her that much. Just, yeah, but she's the weakest character out of all of these characters. I agree. Oh, I, didn't say, I didn't Amen. say she was the strongest character. I, I not, love her. Not strong but, as in... Strength, strong no, as I mean, in characterization. Well, yeah, Weak. absolutely. That's what I'm saying. I love, I love Madoka because she's pure. I'm not sitting there like I love Madoka how she goes from point A to point B and changes drastically. It's like no, I love how Madoka goes from point A to point fucking Z and still Madoka. All the same. And that's why that's that's what I was mentioning earlier. It's so great. Like this movie could have focused on Madoka. You know, the name of the the name of the protagonist yeah. is in the title of the movie. And it would have been really boring to watch because Madoka doesn't change. Madoka never changes. Madoka is Madoka. She is a symbol. She is she is better than the rest. So it would have been really boring to watch that version of the movie if it was just. I think on the Madoka. title works because she's more of a symbol than a character in the series. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think Hamura is more of the main. Yeah, the main, even the main in the original character. series, she's also best girl Hamura. Just throwing it out there. That, it's not mommy. Way, it's weird Hamura. way to pronounce mommy Tomoe. Uh, <laughs> Nobody wants to pronounce that, Jake. That's why. <laughs> no, mommy's mommy's. Best girl. She's the best girl. Uh, we, I, I like that. Um, one of Hamura's tests is the soul gem test that she can only be a uh, hundred, like hundred meters away from her soul gem, or she'll, her body will cease to move. So she she puts the soul gem down and rides the bus, and the world turns to shit because yep. she figures out she's a witch. Like that, she's a oh witch. damn. And then we get, okay, now we get to the point I've been wanting to talk about, because I hate Cube. And we get, a Cube incubator reveals, it reveals his plan. Like, hey, you know what? Law of Cycles was, was pretty cool, but we figured we could get more energy that we were looking for by, by cutting you off from that. And turn you into witches. You know, that thing that you told us about? So we did I it. I love how it's because so we did it. He literally says at the end of the series, he goes, "Wow, that's a that's a great idea. You can get way more energy if we are able to do that." Like, yeah. I wish I could have been in that pitch room of Cubase of just all the Cubase together, just talking about like, "Hey guys, you want to try this idea? I'm sure it's going to be great." Like, yeah, why not? Let's do it's it. Like, Let's have you some guys fun. are never going to guess what Hamra told me. All right, <laughs> and they're like, "What?" He's like, "Apparently, we can turn these bitches into witches." Like, what? <laughs> and they go crazy with emotion, right? So much that we don't even need that many of them, right? <laughs> you, you, you tired of eating those little black squares? Yeah, I'm tired of eating the black squares too. <laughs> Let's kidnap her and put her in a little magic box. Yeah, it's that's what they do. <laughs> they do. They keep her in a thing. This, is, like, again, why I hate Cuba so much. He's like, oh well. Everyone's having a good time. You know, Magical Girls, we, we're using them still, but at least they get a happy ending. No, fuck that. Let's use them some more. <laughs> that's that's Kyobe. I, ugh, I, I, I hate him so much. And I keep referring to him under his Magical Girl mascot name because Incubator doesn't have the same. Incubator. Like, she's like Incubator. Well, that's just his that race. That was weird. Yeah, it's really yeah. a role. So, so uh, something that I thought was pretty cool here is that um, part of the law of cycles got trapped in the thing with them and that's the Madoka that's in her world as well as Sayaka and Bebe 
but the only reason that they they were uh, that the incubators really didn't notice Sayaka or Bebe is because they Sayaka and Bebe existed in this universe still at one point because mm-hmm. because like they were uh, they hunted wraiths. Bebe did. Yeah, it's yeah. Um, Bebe it, hunted wraiths. Well, it's all the all the magical girls. Uh, Baby the, was a magic because it was changed yeah. because time was changed. Right. Oh, yeah. okay, I understand now. And so they go like, "All right, now, Hamra, we're gonna we're gonna open it up, and the Law of Cycles is gonna come and get you, and we're we're gonna capture it." <laughs> aren't you excited? Aren't you excited? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> seriously, that's seriously how he is. He's like, "Isn't it great?" <laughs> and she's like, "No, no, it's terrible." And he's like, "I don't understand. We're doing it anyway." <laughs> Again, Kiyube is like that scientist character, like that evil scientist character that kind of just hangs around, like the like the good characters. Like it's just like, like this is awesome end of the world. Anyone else excited? No, just me. You're all fools. Just me and the teacher. Just me and the just teacher. That's what. <laughs> So Hamura goes like, "Fuck that shit! I'm not gonna let you uh, capture Madoka. So I'm just gonna turn into a witch. I'm gonna turn it. I'm, and so she wills herself to turn to go full witch form. And Kaibi's like, "What? What are you? What are you doing? Don't do like, it! Why, why, like, <laughs> don't do no! Like, so, whoa, 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 whoa! <laughs> K- Kiyube is so pissed off at well, pissed off, but flustered at this point that she uh, that he he, he him in the labyrinth goes." That you guys gotta save her. Don't kill her though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they go. You can talk. And he goes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> he goes. Uh, no. Nope. Ignore important. the man behind the curtain. It's yeah, all fine. Oh, talk. Uh, up another part. I like while she's before she fully becomes a witch. She's uh, Kiyoko's like. You're gonna turn into a witch. You're gonna wreak havoc everywhere. And she goes. Well, Mami Tomoe and Kyoko Sakura are both in the labyrinth already. And I'm pretty sure they can handle one witch. Like, typed it. Like, basically, she's like, you know, those two girls are like, she trusts them enough to kill her. Like, that's real trust. That is, you know, you trust someone that's, that that's, that's, you're, you're that's willing to turn into a monster and hope they kill you. DJ, hmm? I don't know if I trust you guys. I was <laughs> like, are you powerful uh, enough to kill me, guys? Anytime Let's see. now, anytime. That's it. Anytime now, DJ. We're all waiting on you. I, I don't think it, please. I, say, I don't think I can. Ha- I can I can barely handle drunk Anthony. I don't think I can handle <laughs> like witch Anthony. Werewolf, werewolf me. <laughs> Zombie Anthony. We uh, we then get treated to a super badass fight where Bebe and Sayaka use their witch forms to fight like Hamra's witch form. Just badass witch on witch fight, witch fight. And Sayaka and Kyoko have a cute little moment. Where they're like, oh, it's the best. Yeah. She's like, I girls can like girls. She's yeah. like, hold my hand <laughs> and tell me that you didn't leave me behind. I'm sorry, redheaded girl. That's pretty much what it boils down to. That's, you know, that's it not wrong. such a good scene. That was, it was a very, that was a good scene. Like I'm it. glad I wrote a song about it. And then it's, because it plays like such, 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 such a. Well, it could be friendship. It could be close friendship, and then like the camera just pans down, and you just see them them holding hands like back to back. Like, oh no, it's more. This is sweet. I like this. I ship them now. Oh, I ship them for sure. <laughs> Sayoko. I didn't before. That Sayo- Sayoko. That 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 violin dick Sayoko? never deserved her. All right. Yeah. She, he, she even brings it up earlier in the anime too. She's like, oh, you've gotten over Yo Yo Ma. She's like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> And I mean, I mean, she does have the moment where she's like, "Me and you are the same." When she spears, explodey spears her and kills herself too. Yeah. She's like, "You and me are the same forever and ever." Now we'll be. Now we'll never be alone. She's like, "Now we'll never ever be alone." That's I was love. trying to trying to think of like if there's some deeper meaning behind that the love story. It's like, oh, she was staying at Say- uh, Sayaka's house like during this, and so mm-hmm. Sayak, uh, Sayaka gave her like a. Uh, like a home and shelter, and they created the strong bond because Kyoko doesn't have that anymore because her family is dead, and that's why that's why they're together. That's why it makes sense. And I thought, nah, I guess that's not. You don't really need an explanation of why these two are together. You just accept the fact that they are. I like, guess they're in love. This love. That's love. girl love. Girls can love girls. Girls can love girls. Oh, and then uh, Bebe ruins the moment by going, "That's why you came back. I came back just to eat cheese again." <laughs> and I want to point out this is what bothers me. Is the entire movie, Bebe's calling mommy cheese. So she eats. And Bebe mommy? eats mommy in the original series. 
Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Oh. Yeah, that's a little it's a little dark if you think about it, right? Yeah, it is. It's like I love you, cheese. <laughs> and I want to eat cheese and or, you are cheese. Or I'm sure this doesn't have a deeper connection. Yeah, this time mommy just cheese. gave her cheese. She also loves mommy. So threw up cheese instead of getting her head yeah. off. Yeah. Eh. Maybe yeah. she loves cheese. And yeah, it's like if I call somebody strawberry. I love strawberries, so I'm calling them strawberry because it's how much I love strawberries. But if that person were to get turned into a strawberry, I uh, I'd eat them. I eat them eat them right up. <laughs> no hesitation. So, or if I was some type of witch monster, I'd eat them first. So we, we get the uh, the witch's superpowers, and uh, the two magical girls are like Kyoko and Mami, who are like the only actual magical girls left. Are uh, are fighting alongside him, and mommy busts out like this new giant gun that's drawn, but like that's drawn on a horse-drawn carriage, <laughs> and then it's another finale-based attack. I can't remember what it's called. Just the horse-drawn carriage finale. Horse-drawn carriage finale. H D C F. H D C F. The <laughs> the entire scene here is so hype because it looks great. It's fun to watch. The yep. music's fantastic. I loved I loved the fact that they yeah. kept playing the original theme over and over and over again. I loved. It. I never get, I never get tired. I never get tired of it. They're all flying through. You've got like night form. You got witch like witch night form of blue hair girl. Like it's it's. I liked it. Yeah. So eventually they uh, they break out of the uh, the uh, the incubator's trap and kill a ton of them. <laughs> yeah, oh, just too. a lot. Just, they just a lot of them just get horribly murdered. Oh my god! This is my favorite. This is my this is my favorite scene. No. And so, then Hamra, Hamra, Kyoko, and like all the people that got pulled into the witch's labyrinth with them, which, which were Hitomi, uh, Kiyosuke, bunch of bunch of D characters. So just like oh, we t- I, I didn't need to see a scene of it. If you didn't show the scene them out of it, like they escaped, I never would have thought about them again. I never would have thought, oh, <laughs> make it out alive. I don't really care about them. <laughs> exactly. I hope, Did Hitomi okay. live? Yeah, like I would. I, I, I would really need to know. Here. Best girl of the anime, yeah. Hitomi. Uh, yeah. So uh, then, uh, mommy and Kyoko place like uh, Hamura's soul gem on there, and they watch the love cycles come to to bring Hamra to to rest. And it's this um, nice little scene. It's all cute. And Madoka's there, and she's the about... the end of the movie. Everything's happy. Yeah, it's the end of the movie. Everything's happy. She goes, Madoka, like, Hamra, I never, for, like, I never forgot you. Like, I came back for you. Like, like that. that's awesome. You're my boy. You're my boy. We're, we're gonna be, we're gonna be together forever now. And Hamra goes... Gotcha, yeah, bitch. But <laughs> yeah. I don't want to be together with everyone else. I just want to be with you. And she grabs her, and she she steals part of the law of cycles, and, and she fractures it. Fractures it, rips it into two pieces. She's like, she's like no, stop! You'll split me or something. Yeah. Which is just a really weird line. No, no. You're like, you'll I'm pretty sure if I Google that. Two. 100 hentes would open yeah. the show. <laughs> None of which have much to do with Madoka <laughs> Magic. Probably not. Some of which probably do. Because, <laughs> you know, people are sick. <laughs> so she she rips part of... She rips out the Madoka part of the Law of Cycles, is what she claims. Yeah. And by doing so, she gains some of the power of the Law of Cycles. And her obsession... She claims it's love. Like it, it's the emotion of love. That really clearly, what, lust. What is this? Is it passion? Is it despair? No, it's love. Yeah, she. Like, oh. She says Kiyobe's, um, Kiyobe's, um race couldn't really comprehend it, and so uh, I guess that's the that's the explanation of why it warped her soul gem so crazy. Is that Kiyobe's race didn't really think about it because they only thought about despair, like a harvesting despair. Not. And so it corrupts her soul gem into this new thing, and she in, like ingests it. She swallows it. She She's swallows like, it. Um, and um, she, she goes, um, And um. she rewrites the universe because she oh. has the new power. 
I would hate to be someone on the other side of the world who's just like minding my own business, and all of a sudden, like the universe gets swallowed up in weird color scheme darkness. That would have freaked me the fuck out. You the, the, you like, met, whoa, 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 whoa! You're like, this is, is the second like, time that, this has happened to me. <laughs> I hate <you." laughs> twice in one week. So uh, that happened. She rewrites the world, and it kind of has a more dark like feel to it because Hamura says that she's that if this power made Madoka a god, she's kind of the opposite. And <laughs> not kind of the opposite. She, she is the is opposite. She, the opposite. Is, yeah. she said in like in a the dog dub, in the dub she says she's a demon, but I the official translation has her as uh, as a devil. Which oh, I, interesting. And the version I watched, they said, but they said demon. the opposite they said of demon. God is dog. So <laughs> that's the backwards of God. It's the uh, yeah. So yeah, the official translation of her is devil, hmm. because that's devil. all the merchandise of that of that form of her is devil Hamra. Hmm. See, see, you think like maybe she's right. Maybe she has a point on what she's thinking. Maybe her way of thinking is correct. And then she also describes herself as like, I guess I'm evil now. Like she uses yeah. the word evil. So it's like, yep. oh. Hard to side Sorry. with you when you just admit that. No, yeah. she she like absolutely like knows she's in the wrong. She's like, I took away this thing that made everybody happy because I don't want to share. Sometimes you got to be selfish, all right? And uh, so in this world, Sayaka and uh, I think it hinted that Bebe as well still have their memories from or before the universe got rewritten the first time even. And mm-hmm. Saika's not happy. Saika's like you, like basically what I just said. You ruined something everybody loved because you you could play nice. And and Hummer's like, "What you gonna do?" And Saika's like, "I'm gonna fuck you. I'm gonna fight you." And she like, which forms up. And Hummer's <laughs> like, "But do you remember why you want to fight me?" She's like, "What?" And like Hummer's like, "Yeah, I'm messing with your fucking like memories." Your brain. And the same thing's happening. Like, I brain. think it's implied the same thing's happening to Bebe because Bebe kind of just runs by like an idiot going, Wee! Yeah! yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, just there goes that poor, poor, poor yeah. girl again. Yeah. <laughs> Psycho goes like, that's my fucking backup, man. <laughs> Get back here! <laughs> I'm not gonna win this. No, but the whole heel turn, I feel like, is what I was talking about before with um, it kind of going, you know, a little too quick, kind of happening all at once. Um, especially later when she's like, Madoka, you're here with me now, but you're also my enemy. And you're like, wait, but didn't, wasn't this all for her? Like, it, it, well, there's a lot of logic. Well, she's not her like, enemy mm-hmm. right now. She's just like, she's, she's using this, this, this gray area that she's in right now. She's like, eventually Madoka will remember her memories and then they're going to be enemies. But like right now, this is everything Hummer wants, but she knows it can't last because Madoka is too powerful. Exactly. One like one thing said, I'm thinking is, does um because she tells she tells uh, blue hair Saika. um Saika, she tells her just enjoy being a normal human like she says just enjoy a world where you can be normal. you normal. And did did Hamura create a world where there's no magical girls? No, because no, she, she she has her ring. She well, said that she needed she needed Kyube. Because wraiths still exist, so she needs magical girls to fight the wraiths. And if you if you look, I had to I had to double check, but Mommy, Kyoko, and Sayaka all have their soul gem rings. Hmm. So I think they're still magical girls. I think Hamra's still a magical girl in their like team, but they just have to. But she's a god. But she's like, <laughs> that like, seems like it'll be a little easy for him. Well, I think she's like playing a part because she says like, "Oh well, you know," she's saying like, "Sai, because like enjoy this now because when the wraiths happen, I'm going to destroy this world. Like when we destroy the wraiths, the wraiths are gone." Yeah. And Sai goes. So can you? Could you not destroy the wraiths then? Could we <laughs> wait on that for a little bit? And so, a uh, guy in the coffee shop here. Uh, <laughs> this guy who's gotten dragged along on all this, please. <laughs> So, so uh, can can you keep your can you keep your feelings low? All right, giving giving emotional teenage girls stupid amounts of power sounds like a bad idea. <laughs> I know she wasn't. I know she wasn't. She doesn't need it, her time traveling powers. But when like Madoka was like starting to remember and like wait, maybe this is it. Maybe I can do something else. Instead of hugging her, I totally thought Hammer was just going to be like, oh, well, try again. Like, just, like, yep. turn back and talk to, like, Madoka being introduced to the class. Like, okay. She's like, not going down that hallway. This time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You remember nothing. 
You remember nothing. <laughs> you remember nothing. So, um, so with with this one, the the original series ended on like a bittersweet note, where Magical Girl still kind of died, um, with no one really remembering who they are, but they at least died in peace. And you know, Madoka doesn't exist anymore, but it's for the greater good. And everyone doesn't remember every like remember the events of the series, but you know, everyone's happier for it. This one kind of, this one just ends sad. Kind of? Yeah. We're going to say no. kind of no, ends sad? No, it's great for Amra. It's fantastic. The main no. character. Amra, <laughs> Amra knows her happiness is limited. She goes, well, like, you know, uh, eventually Madoka will get her memories back and I'm going to have to fight all my friends. What if yeah, boo. Think of a new yeah, boo, boo, I'll just wish them away. <laughs> much more interesting of a story. You're saying you didn't, this doesn't, this doesn't fit. You know, like it, it, it almost jumps the shark with its ending of of Hamura turning bad and, and the evilness of it. But I think that perfectly sets it up in in a perfect situation where it ends on a bittersweet note, where you kind of know what's going to happen. It's either they're gonna they're gonna remember, they're gonna fight, they're gonna be enemies. And like if that's the all we get of it, then that's okay. I mean, like we we still know where the story is going, but it also leaves you hungry enough for the next movie. Like I want I want another movie desperately to, to see what happens next. And I think it's because of because because I think the ending works so effectively. If it was a happy ending, if she did save Hamura and like, oh, everyone's happy, everything kind of ends like this, even if it was still similar in tone to the bittersweet nature of the show, then it's still like, oh, that was sweet. That was a nice story. But what I like about this movie and what I like about the series is, is that it always challenges your, your what you what you want to happen by going in completely different directions. So that's why I'm all I'm with Jake, who said at the beginning, all in on this ending, because I totally am all in on this ending. And, because it's so dark and because it's so great. The only part I don't, I like the I like where it ends up. I just don't really like how it gets there. I think it happens a little sudden. Um, mm-hmm. I wish there was a little more. Um, uh, I wish we were shown a little bit more how um, you know Hamura being a little bit obsessive, a little crazy. Because it's like she's in it for love. She's in it to save everyone, um, and then it's like. She's she's not she's she's selfish she's crazy now you know it's I mean we do get a little bit of the obsession but um, I wish there was a little more. Well, it, this is where the uh, this movie banks on the series um, again is episode ten is a whole episode dedicated to her obsession. And yeah, so- but in then it's so sweet it's so sweet and selfless and then it becomes like she's going through hell to save. To save Madoka, it's for our Madoka. It's not for Hamura, and 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 that's how I view her. But like all of a sudden, she has this heel turn that I, I they don't they don't really show much of. I wish there was more of that, well, more more showing that, more 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 telling me that this is gonna this is gonna happen. Well, I think it's well choreographed and telegraphed in it because we know Hamura is so obsessed with Madoka. I mean, she turned into a witch because. Because of her grief of missing Hammer, I don't think your heel turns unexpected. I think that's I think that's kind of a logical jump. Sure, I think the explanation on it got a little lost, where it's like I'm okay. Cubase talking a lot about why this is happening, so it's like that's fine, just okay. But from point A to point B, I mean, I think that makes sense. The the explanation of it um, would help too. I think um, with if if it was a little more. T- take a slower time with that. It's also with what they're doing too. Um, uh, the the reveal of that they're they've got her in a box and stuff like that. That's all like okay, okay, all right. Well, they're, I mean, how much more? So do you trapped you, her in a little box. Do you want yeah. them to spend actually... twenty minutes explaining no, that she got just, trapped in a box? It's just too. And how they just... built the isolation chamber. I mean, you don't need the explanation of how. You just know that that it's there and that this is what it does. <laughs> It's yeah. just more of you know a jump in logic than the ending w- originally was, well, and so is so is Hammer's heel turn. It's just more. Um, the The original ending was 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 much easier to digest than than this one. And I'd say that I you know after listening to all of your points, Kobe, I think that I'm I'm coming more so to agree with both you and Jake, but I still well, do agree with with uh, with DJ though in in stating that uh, you know. I don't want to use the words that the, that I felt like the ending was rushed, but I, you know, like to DJ's point, I definitely feel like they should have taken different routes to to achieve achieve that ending as well. I didn't like I the fact that. that this this is just, you know, 
her overall obsession is something that's completely building in her. I loved that in the original series, but I guess I wanted a little bit more. I, I, that's it, it. It just left left me wanting more from the ending. Okay. Like, what, what do you mean? Like, you wanted you wanted more explanation, or you wanted more content? More explanation. Explanation. So. Well, yeah. I feel like it does a good enough job. Like, it doesn't do a great job. But it gets it gets a it gets a C like a, a strong C on explaining everything. Yeah, like, I'd say that if that was acceptable, then I, yeah, it's acceptable. I mean, it doesn't. It's, it you you see it shows it doesn't tell you, which is something I'm just I left with prefer. a lot of questions. Like like um, Kobe said, he's he's he wants a new movie, and I I do too. I would like to see the the um the resolution of this but i would also like if there was more resolution in the movie itself it kind of ends on a cliffhanger and sometimes when movies end on cliffhangers you never get you never get the ending of that cliffhanger and for this one came out when 2014 so well it's like I what mean, we're, what is Amara gonna do we're getting she, another one and what well, is like she screwed over blue hair how is that gonna affect her life like she's supposed to have this happy life as a human but she doesn't remember like you know stuff like that. Does she still have her relationship with the red-haired girl, or did she forget she, that that ever happened? Like stuff like right. that. I, that's I, what's great about it. That's what's great when a movie leaves these types of questions to be discussed. Because then we get to discuss these things. If it's so open-ended and closed-ended, then sure, that creates some type of a, some type of emotion of just completion. But it 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 cuts off all types of conversations that we could have about whether, as you said, blue-haired chick or red-haired chick are together or or who keeps their powers or what's the rules of this world. Because that's interesting to talk about because everybody has their own theories about what's happening. I I do like that, but the... There has, if you leave me with questions, I'd like them to be answered eventually. Yeah, some sort of resolution would be nice. That's <laughs> okay. Well, to answer that, some of that that's stuff, that's the type of ending that 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 belongs in something that's going to get a definite season two. It's getting that's a sequel. the type of ending that belongs in something that you're like you're gonna like if you you read a novel and they ended the novel like that a couple like a year later you're getting the sequel to that novel that's not the ending that belongs in something where you're not going to get the sequel for fucking five years i don't want to wait five years for something that's way i would wait way five years awful. if it means the story is perfect if it, if it creates a better story for them waiting longer then i'm fine with them waiting longer for it to, to be the most to be the best outcome that it can be because it's still a resolution and it's still enough time in between to be um to, to anticipate it more I mean, it's just you want to. I want I want it to come out when I'm when I'm hot on it. You know, I don't want to be like, oh yeah, I loved that back when I watched it. But, I want it to be like I, I still mean, really want to like that. that. Yeah, thankfully we watched it late. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. true. I did watch it very late. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, like you said, people people have you know they've watched it and kind of forgot that they watched it. You know, I I feel like though some of the things that you addressed are answered in the in the movie itself like oh are Sayaka and Kyoko still in a relationship at the ending scene Sayaka Kyoko and Madoka are all hanging out are they but what but you what are the, what is the relationship is you don't this, know but they know each the, other is this the power is just a dick like you guys don't is, love each other anymore is this the Sayaka that like <laughs> came back into this horrible world for Kyoko or is this just the 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 Sayaka that originally met her you know like that, well, I feel like absolutely feelings, which form I feel like it's original the switch forms, but yeah. I, but now she doesn't remember that, so it's like, how does that affect her relationship with with red hair girl? You yeah, know, girl. the again, like yeah, these questions come up, but it's and I like a lot of showing. The You'd like it. Well, there's a lot of showing, like the the. Uh, I don't know. For me, it sounds like you guys would would have liked more exposition, like. And, yes, absolutely. But stories are supposed what? to have a resolution. Whoever wants and this more one doesn't exposition. have a long, not an exposition, a resolution. Yeah, it, yeah. But I mean, you said leading up to this, I would have liked more explanation of what was happening, and what's happening at were, the they end. Were, they were is showing a resolution, not expo- exposition. You were saying like, oh, more expo- or more explanation of the the trap, more explanation of other stuff. No, I would much rather have resolution than that. What I was saying is that you brought that up as well. Like that is something else. I know that you like okay, with like yeah. resolution more. You could leave all that out and give me more resolution. I'd be very okay. happy. Yeah. <laughs> all right, but I'm just saying that I feel like the exposition itself is shown. It's not like people are out there. It's not saying like the exposition is, but the resolution isn't. It yeah. leaves it on a huge cliffhanger. 
Yes, and it, it's not, I don't know, it's not that huge of a cliffhanger. There's some open-ended questions, but if it the series ended like that, I don't think I'd sit there and sit up at night going, hmm, like, I wonder if Modoka did remember. I think it I would be, enough. like, super excited. If I watched this when it came out, I'd be super stoked. I'd be like, oh, that was awesome. I can't wait until the sequel of this movie comes out. I'm really, really excited. And then it never fucking does. And then I forget <laughs> that I was excited entirely. <laughs> Yeah, but it's it is it is it's gonna happen though. That's the that's the thing. Is it eventually? Yeah, but me who watched it when it came out, I don't give a shit anymore. I watched that four years ago. Kobe, I'm gonna Jake, have to rewatch. You guys, you guys watched it. You guys watched it. Are you guys excited yeah. for it to yeah. come out? I'm yeah, so excited. For it. They both go. just rewatched the movie, but guys. I'm, I'm, they I'm, both just rewatched the movie. Here, here. I'm talking about someone who, when the new movie comes out, you shouldn't have to rewatch the old one. You wow. should remember the old you one should well enough. To watch DJ, the old DJ one. how many but movies do you know have wanna... sequels come out the next year? Yeah. I mean, Very... you know, to to counterpoint what you just, what you literally just said that that the amount of of story that's shown on screen should be enough to satiate yourself until the sequel comes out and i absolutely a hundred percent agree with both jake and kobe in that fact that i can stay interest interest interested and invested in the story and the characters until the fucking sequel comes out yeah because you just watched it anthony you didn't watch this four years ago when it came out this is the type of story that lends itself very very well to like a like a next season, something like but, that. If this was the season closer of Madoka Magica, and there was a next season coming out next year or in two years, I'd be stoked. That would that's much more perfect than yeah. it being a movie and then all the fans waiting four or five years for the next film. That's just that's not an ideal situation advocate, in though. any way, shape, or form. Is that is is that an ideal situation for storytelling? Yeah, so then, are you going to argue that it's lazy storytelling and bad and, and an overall bad plot and and not interesting I at didn't all? Say for anything to like that not at all? Be invested like that? I, I didn't thing? say anything like that at all. I said if this was their plan to wait so long to release the second one, then there should be more resolution in the first one. That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying it's bad at all. I'm saying that. The, no, but a if something good were to come out that ending would be years before, and it's it's just a horrible storyline that you're not going to stay invested or be interested in the next sequel coming out. I, that, that that doesn't make any sense to me. What are you saying? I don't even know what you're saying right now. You basically <laughs> are saying that if you watched it originally when it first came out, that you yes. would lose interest until the sequel came out. Yes, because it took so long to come out. I would have seen so much more I, things. I, I would have forgotten about you. it. I, I don't disagree. remember stuff that I watched four years ago that doesn't have a sequel. But, I, mean, I don't remember stuff. I When I saw the sequel was coming out, I would go, oh, yeah, that was really good. I'm going to watch it. And I would probably watch the movie beforehand, yes. But am I going to stay excited all the way through? No. It's not like when a season ends and the next season's coming out the next year and you stay excited talking with your friends about what's going to happen next season all the way until the next season airs. It's not like that. It's four years of waiting. It's totally different. I guess to move on... <laughs> <laughs> if the movie comes out because uh studio shaft like all the people who worked on it the magical like the magical quartet part of um studio shaft have all been busy with separate projects until now like all those projects are wrapped up like uh the writer for madoka magica finished writing like uh godzilla destroy all monsters or whatever that uh netflix movie that just came out so that and now that that's all wrapped up everyone's like free to go back to working on Madoka Magica. So the movie ha- ha- will have possible release dates starting in 2019. Are you telling me that just starting now, you watch the movie in 2018 is 2019 too long to wait, like late no. 2019. That would be just like waiting for a new season of a show. Not at all. Okay. I'm talking so, about if I watched it when it came out so now, five for, years ago. So from 2018 to now, twenty, let's go 2020. Is that too long? Uh, I don't know. Probably. It, uh, too long is no, when no, me no, and my friends no, no, stop. No, no. No. Too long. Fuck you, Anthony. Too long is when me and my friends stop talking about it. That's too long. When, when you stop having discussions about the theory crafting and stuff like that of what's going on, you're not as excited about it as you were when you first watched it, and that's too long. Ideally, you would it would be coming out right when your friends were right as you like stopped theory crafting to surprise you like when you just had just forgotten about it. That's the best. I mean, that's why seasons come out every year of a show. 
It's not because that's the ideal time frame to make a season of a show. That's not the ideal time frame to make a season of a show. It's because that's when people are still excited about it. Okay, so, okay. Um, I, I think I'm, I'm getting a better understanding of where you're coming from. I personally don't, like, agree with that. But that's just, like, you and I are different people. Like we Were have... you still very excited for the sequel of Madoka Magica until you watched it again? Yeah, you, I have okay. figures of uh, I have figures of Mami Tomoe. Madoka Magica is a constant anime I recommend to people. Like I, it's for I constantly say it's the pure test of the third episode law. It and uh, I, it's an anime I constantly love, and its rebellion is kind like is that uh, anime that I feel like I don't need to rewatch because it's still enough in my head. But when did you watch it? You didn't watch it when it came out, though. I watched. Did you Rebe- watch Rebellion when it came out? When it came out, I watched Rebellion when I lived in my shitty studio apartment. So that's Ooh. maybe like a year or two after it came out. I'm just it's it's just way too long to wait to release a sequel. How is that a hard? How is that a hard thing to grasp? Like no, I mean it's I, clearly way too long, right? Like I'm not crazy. I I I watched five the, years. I watched the sequel for a film? Series, Attack on Titan that came out four years ago. I was hyped for it the entire time. Like, like Attack on Titan season one, and then four years later, Attack on Titan season two. I was excited for it the entire time. Again, maybe again, I'm I have a, a more uh, obsessive personality than you. When I'm, <laughs> I'm Hamra. When it comes to anime, yeah. When it comes to anime, I'm, I'm Hamra, dude. Like I, I'll sit there and I'll, if I have an anime I like, I'll watch it. I got, I was excited for the Fate Grand Order game because I was like, that's finally coming out in North America. Woo! I haven't watched a Fate series since uh, Unlimited Blade Works. Just with something, certain things have an ideal development cycle, right? And if it comes out after the ideal development cycle, um, it's it's too long. You waited too long. The hype is over. If it comes out before the ideal uh, de- development cycle, I'm going to be pissed because it's probably not going to be good. I would I would have liked for you to wait longer and make it better. You know what I mean? I get. It's I, like it doesn't take five years to make a movie. It doesn't take five years to make a movie. So it's not like they've been working on it the whole time to make it perfect. You know what I mean? Whereas, like, the game, you work on a game for five years, they have been working on it, on it the whole time. That's why it took so long. But, like, a, you know, the next season of a TV show, if I have to wait two years to do it, it's probably because, like, actors were bitching and they fucking wouldn't, they wouldn't t- accept the money they made last year. You know, that's probably what, that's what happened with The Sopranos and stuff. They it got too expensive to make the show because all the producers and stuff were asking for so much money, and you had to wait two years between each season of The Soprano. That wasn't fun. I don't want to wait two years between seasons. Nobody does. I'm like I I feel like if if you enjoy the content enough, you're you're gonna you're gonna have that genuine genuine interest to watch more of that content. I watched yes, The yes, Sopranos yes, when they came out, yeah, yeah. but but. Was during that second year? Did I forget about it quite a bit? Yes. When it was announced, was I like, "Fuck yeah, I love yeah. this show." But the, yes, I was. But, but I did forget about it. What I'm the saying is, the, the time, the hype shouldn't justify the the quality of how you of how you take in the content. If you watch a movie and you are hyped for the sequel, and the sequel doesn't come out for five years, you shouldn't say, "Oh, the movie's going." You shouldn't say, "Oh, that movie." Like I have no interest in seeing that movie. The hype's gone. If that, if... I don't. I still have interest in seeing it. Yeah, yeah. But the hype I'm is just, gone. Let, let me let me continue. The hype doesn't justify. Doesn't mean that something is like something isn't going to be as appreciated. Hype loses kind for me. Like when something's like hyped up. I guess this is, I'm hipstery with this thought process. But if something's like hyped up. And oh my gosh, I freaking lost train of thought because here's here's what I'm trying to say. If I really love something, I'm gonna watch this the sequel or read the sequel or whatever, play the sequel, no matter what, right? It could take forever to come out. If I loved it, I'm still gonna do it, right? If I loved the old one, I'm gonna play the new one, unless for some reason like everyone says it's terrible and I just skip it, right? But that's usually not the case. I'll I'll watch it, I'll play it, I'll read it, whatever. I'll because I liked that series, right? But. I everyone isn't me, right? So if people are hyped about a series, they're going to lose a lot of viewership or whatever if they wait too long to to let it come out. Like I, all I'm saying is that five years to make a movie that's way too fucking long. That's way too fucking long for to make people wait. That's way too fucking long. I don't I don't agree. I feel like you know you you establish a fan base and your fan base, 
either one is is. <laughs> How does your fan base have anything that that doesn't change the fact that five years is too long to make a movie? All your right. fan base has nothing to do with it. it that's that too is, long. We're just gonna go in five a big years circle. Is too long. Yeah, over okay. and over so and over again. To, to, to end, we're, we're to caught end, in a Hummer attire. Yeah, and to to stop. <laughs> it's way too long to make stop a movie. Stop bringing Kobe that's, that's back too to long. try and save us from this conversation. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we'll just we'll we'll we'll. we'll, we'll we will say that DJ considers five years to be too long to for a sequel to be made. For, for and a movie, that is yeah. that. absolutely. And that is that. So, uh, would you guys like to say anything else about the movie itself before we uh, we end spoilers and go into our spoiler-free reviews? It's good. Um, good. Gobi. Sorry, I froze. I froze for a second. What, what was your question? Uh, anything else you'd like to say about the movie before we go into our spoiler-free reviews? Did you guys see the post-credit scene? Oh yes, we didn't talk yes. about that. Yes. Yep. Did you just talk about that? Shit. No, we didn't. No, talk we didn't. About that. No, we, we didn't, didn't talk, talk about, about it. it. Oh, we didn't talk about that. Good. Sorry, I, I, I didn't what, know what we were talking what about. What do you think that I? I took it as Hamra straight up taunting, like the incubator. Yeah. Yeah. Why was the moon only? Why was there only half a moon? What? Yeah, you didn't. I didn't catch you didn't that. See that? No. You'd see that, yeah. I I I uh, had some speculation that uh, it was because uh, Madoka, she's got a fragment of Madoka. That's that's why. Oh, so she can only create like half a universe. And Madoka is Maybe. Sailor Moon. Sailor Maybe Moon. I don't know. I don't know. I, I I was wondering why there was only half a moon. Oh well, there there's something we can talk about really quick before we go out. Uh, what do you guys <laughs> since we know a sequel's coming? Uh, what would you guys? What do you guys think? Is is, is it like official? Yeah. They, oh, they you, announced... said, you said that everybody was not was was wasn't busy. That's yeah, because said. well, the the original plan for it was to come up come out right away, uh, but then like everybody who works part of it that'd have been a good idea. Oh my god, we skipped that part. <laughs> oh, we go back in time. Dude, <laughs> you, 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 you are here. not going to John Quick, Connor. Turning my thing. Okay, shut the fuck up. <laughs> so the. Uh, so Am the, I at the right time? Did I come back at the right time? Don't get into this conversation about how long it takes to make a movie. Are we there yet? <laughs> let's let's. let's... <laughs> So, so the uh, what, what would you guys think uh, is going to happen in the sequel? Uh, it's going to start in the classroom. It's going to start in the classroom. <laughs> There's a new student. A new transfer student. Yeah, it's got to. It's got to. Um, I, I, things I want to see and Actually, things yeah. that I uh, you know that um, are probably going to happen. Things I, I want to see. Um, the Sayaka and uh, what's her face? Kyoko. Right here. Yeah, I want to see that relationship, you know, developed on screen. That that that's the fun part about Madoka Magica is is that it has those little snippets of of you know slice of life, and I love I love that aspect. So I want to see more of that. I would like to see not necessarily probably a, a four on one Hamura fight, you know, Ooh. and uh, oh, Anthony. that was, that's going to be pretty badass, and. Uh, Things that are probably going to happen is we're going to see a, a hell of a lot of resolution when it comes down to uh, why Sayaka still has her uh, witch form, why she doesn't exist in in that world, as well as Bebe as well. Okay, okay. So, I think you know, I agree with Anthony. We're going to see, you know, hopefully the animation is just as good. Hopefully the fights are just as cool. Um, uh, we are going to see a lot of that resolution, you know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I think, you know, maybe should have been in the first. All right, skipping out. Oh, okay. <laughs> you're you're, you're uh, just going to forfeit turns if you keep reading <laughs> what, what I want to see, I guess, is the only way to, to beat Hong. I think I want to see, even though we're going to hate it, I want to see a Cube a, like Sayaka team to overthrow this demon to, because they're both in these horrible situations to, for the greater good because that's the only way to, to beat her is to is to team up with Cuba and the rest of the incubators to find a way to to stop the evil that is Hamura. That's what Ooh. I want. To see. Ooh, I don't know if you could see Jake's face. He's good. not happy about. That. You know, <laughs> I want them my team up. Do you mean they're going to kill Cuba and then use its body to beat Hamura? <laughs> like, wow. That ending. We're talking about that end credit scene. Come on. What the he beat up Cuba? So I was like, no. He was so I felt hurt. nothing. He's so I felt nothing. And cute. And I, he just wanted to. Bring some I energy really to the world. Either. <laughs> I didn't really care either. I, like, I, I thought it kind of got what was coming. Yeah, to. I'm like, oh, oh, look, my my stupid scientific plan thing didn't work out. Big fucking He's surprise. Like a dick, evil genius, and he got what was coming. Yeah, to him. he 
he's like the only dick evil genius who survives like his movie. And now look at that. Oh, you got you deserve it. But I think yeah, but I still the only way that they can they can break out of this is using Cubase help. Unless they go straight for the Madoka's energy is so pure that it's gonna break out of this one too. Like and everything's gonna be fine. I, I do think they are going to team up with QA. I don't want it to happen, but I do think <laughs> I do also think that the four on one magical girl fight might happen and now that Anthony has said it, I want it to happen so Quick, bad. Tie, oh, tie a ribbon it's around oh, tie a ribbon around her and don't get frozen in time. Uh-huh, uh-huh. If she still has that power. Yeah, yeah, she's, cause she's she's gonna go demon or uh, devil form. So she's gonna go full devil form and then we're gonna get uh we're gonna get mega mega Madoka. There, so the question is, will Hamura be at, in, in the next movie? Is she going to be, be redeemed? Or is she just going to continue down a path of darkness and end, and, and as a villain? So probably, I think she'd redeem, be redeemed and then die. Because it, It's got to follow that bittersweetness of the Madoka. Death yeah. redemption. I don't think she's, I don't think, she, I don't think she's going to be redeemed and live. And live yeah, like I agree. Like, I agree. She doesn't make it out of here alive. Or she's evil forever. Or she wins and she, everyone else dies. It's that would be bittersweet. Yeah. Or she wins and everyone else dies. It's gotta be. It's gotta be either bitter, bittersweet or depressing for a Madoka series. It can't. <laughs> it can't. It wouldn't be, be happy. depressing if Hamura won. That's a happy ending for me. No. She's the main character. She's a good guy. No, that's where we got at the end of this <laughs> that's, movie. Don't watch that's Death that's Note. some weird logic. Main Don't character, watch Death Note. good guy. It's not it's a, she, she just be the because she said directly that she was evil it doesn't make her evil. All right, she's just doing stuff for her own selfish no, evil reasons. Though, you know, it's like when you do evil things and you hang out with evil people. Yeah, but what's evil? You know, like she's just trying to you know have her I own know. lover, and no one else can have evil. her, no matter yeah, how what. About the, how about destroying the entire that world after? Like, yeah. Creating chaos and throwing a wrench and she's like, just establish. destroying everyone's <laughs> lives and ruining all their love and friendship so she could have this girl all to herself for How, a what's finite about period that? of time for a finite <laughs> period of time and what is evil about that what is self i mean it's selfish sure would you hate me if i said everything huh <laughs> selfish sure but evil it's out of love it can't be you know even though she said herself she's, she's evil, evil. <laughs> whatever all right I'll, i just I'll, really I'll, loves Madoka. All right, I, I think uh, I think we've gone a lot deeper into this than I thought we would have. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and end spoilers now. Uh, welcome back. If you skipped the uh, that portion of the podcast, I don't know why you would <laughs> listen to this podcast if you're going to skip that. Like two hours. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the movie. Welcome back to our ten minute podcast. <laughs> uh, so at the end of a review, actually, you know what? I promised DJ I would give him a chance. Uh, DJ, how about you explain our review and rating system? Number one, uh, you got, you got, it's real bad, which means, you know, you take it, you throw it, you jump it in the trash, you shake it all around. It's a bad anime. Okay. Number oh, two. I was going to rhyme. <laughs> recycling bin, right? That's, this is you, how I felt about the uh, over the trash the can that they did in the see, show. <laughs> you see the anime in there. You go, ooh, what's what's that there, huh? Ooh, maybe I'll maybe I'll look at it. But then turns out not that good, and you just recycle it. You throw it in your other trash bin, shake it all around, do the hokey pokey, right? Are you the pumpkin? No, I'm the <laughs> <Yeah>. melon. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> What's in your cake? It's a fine. That's the third one, right? It's fine. That's when you're digging through the dumpster. Digging through the dumpster. You you rip open a, 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 a trash bag from, from Scolari's or Smith's or wherever you're at, right? And what's inside? But but a bunch of hamburger meat, right? And it's only moldy on the very outside of the hamburger meat. So you take all that home. You cut open the moldy That's outside. You, 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 you slap on the inside, and then you eat that stuff for a week. Delicious hamburger meat. That's a find right and there. And you die. So uh, for, you die. for the record, um, I've always imagined a find as like jumping into a dumpster and finding like a Gibson guitar with like the neck broken. Yeah. Oh, so well, we, you and we you and DJ were saying very similar life. things. <laughs> it's about I'm, the same I'm thing. easily pleased. I it's guess it's about huh? the same thing. <laughs> like, or like you know the the lamp from uh, from. A, from a Christmas story. Like, oh, a leg lamp. Like, oh, yeah. Leg lamp. Which, yeah. yeah. Oh, boy. Moldy hamburger meat. 
Like that's oh, only same. Moly on the, I feel only moly same. on the outside. So, so well, how many shoot on where you are in life, right? If you're a homeless man outside. and you what find you the hamburger meat, you're, that's a fine for you. Or if you find a, a jacket so with holes in it. In? <laughs> it's like you find a jacket with holes in it, and now you can sleep warm at night. That's a fine. Better, closer, closer to than the hamburger meat one. <laughs> the hamburger meat you get to eat. You haven't eaten in weeks, Jake. So, so C- Kobe, uh, did, did you get the rating system down? Do you know what the rating system is? Oh, perfectly. DJ described that so well. Okay. Thank you, Kobe. I think I'm going to do a new thing where I just go back to saying the rating system myself. <laughs> hey, I have never once let oh, you Oh, and let Anthony do it every now and then. Yay. <laughs> I nailed it that time. All right. Yeah. Uh, so how about we, uh, Kobe? You're the guest, so yeah. uh, we'll let you go last. Go we'll last, Anthony. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Screw you guys. Fine. <laughs> so uh, Anthony, go back uh, to my own podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony, uh, what's your rating? This is absolutely a find. Um, you know, it's it's uh, it gave me the same feelings of when I was originally watching the series, not but a week ago, and. <laughs> Yeah. Um, you know, I definitely just carried carried it over. I can definitely see how, you know, that short bit of time between the original series and these couple of movies that were released, um, you know, definitely leaves you invested in and definitely leaves you interested in the overall story of these characters. I am 100% invested. I care about almost every single one of these characters. Hitomi, especially. I want to find out what happens to her. So Somebody get um, me a Hitomi figure right now. Do their schedules ever match up? I just need I to just, know. I just need to know. So, um, But that being said, I, I still love the art style. I love the animation. I felt like this is probably one of the best animes we've, we've ever watched. And uh, personally, this goes on easily w- m- my, my top ten list. This is, as a whole, I'd say taking... <laughs> Um, the first movie as well, <laughs> as well as the um, <laughs> original series in this movie. This definitely goes on my 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 watch list. I would recommend it to anybody that asked me about it, and uh, quite frankly, I would I would recommend it to just about everybody. This is a find. All right, uh, for me personally, again, uh, I agree with Anthony. This is uh, a find for me as well. The anim the animation only got better. The uh, I feel like the movie is a integral part of the story. If you watch the series, you need to watch the movie. Um, the characters progress. We get more of my favorite character. Uh, we get more of her running around. And quite frankly, it just it just sticks with you. And uh, <laughs> really resonates uh, with you if you really enjoyed the original series. DJ. Um, my my review for this anime is going to reflect uh, pretty much identically to my review from uh, this movie is going to reflect my review for the anime. Um, it's really really strong. Um, uh, it does suffer in the many of the places where almost all anime I feel like suffers, and I don't know if it's just the the style and stuff like that. Like you know, but but a lot of mediums have have problem have have stuff that they have problems in like like you know like sitcom tv has problems with uh you know develop story development and stuff like that just because of how it's how it's written but uh yeah anime also has problems and this anime does struggle from your typical anime problems of pacing um has some problems with its resolutions um so i think if you're if you like anime but um you tend to to non not draw towards anime that do struggle with those typical problems that anime struggle with, then you won't like this one. Um, uh, but I think that type of person is pretty rare. Um, I I definitely notice the problems in a lot of animes when it comes to that, but uh, I certainly enjoyed this one a lot. So you'd have to really really not like uh, that those problems to to let it uh, take down from this anime. Uh, enough to where you wouldn't like it. I think it's a, a find. I think it's a good supplement to the um, to the series. I think it's a little weaker than the series um, story wise, but uh, the visuals and the the the, the fighting in this are <clears throat> ten times that of the series. They're they're fantastic. So yeah, definitely a find. Um, if you love anime, you watch it for sure. All right, well said, Kobe. Trash. Yeah. 
Trash. <laughs> no, 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 I'm kidding. You can't like, kill the witch. <laughs> no. Um. All right. So it's echoing everybody else. Madoka Magic is one of my favorite animes there have been. I, and what I love about the series itself is that uh, how I've always described is that every three episodes the show has changed so drastically in a really organic way. The way that it tells its story and its evolution is just fantastic. Where I'm invested in what's happening. And I'm excited to see all these twists and turns. And the way it builds into such an exciting conclusion is just makes it one of the best. Um, the movie itself, so so for the series, I like that it subverts expectations and goes in wild directions. So I, so I expect that from the movie. And I think the movie delivers that because it takes this very, um, this very basic plot that we've been talking about. Just Hamura, then I froze. Now I'm back. All right. So... This is me coming back in time. Did I come back at an early enough time to uh, to stop myself from, from spoiling the movie? No, but you should pick off, pick up right after you spoiled it, so we can hear what you're saying. <laughs> Sorry about that. God, um, because I like how it takes the main character and from where she starts to where she ends is just a fantastic character study, and it ending in such a way that makes me invested in what's happening next and makes me wonder what's going on and leaves me with so many questions is what I look for in a movie. And I'm happy that we have it paired that with fantastic characters, beautiful animation, wonderful fight sequences, and just everything about it being just top notch. That This is definitely a find. All right. Probably the best review it, you know, in well, between not, me and DJ. Yeah. Not, not including Jake. No, no, I was going to say, no, it's, it's Kobe's job to do this. I mean, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I I'm gonna just like last time I did I don't think I liked it as much as you guys did. <laughs> I'm just uh, uh, after hearing your reviews. Uh, shit! Wow. <laughs> oh. Join us, DJ. We love this anime. I mean, I like it a lot. Wait like, five years. DJ's the, the movie. DJ's the witch. Yeah. <laughs> and really? Yeah. I'm just I'm too fucking uh, that that is true. I'm 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 no I'm no Ren levels, but I am kind of jaded when it comes to storytelling. So well, you know when it, I mean, like in the defense of of being critical of a story, you know, you were you have certain expectations that that you that you want to have. And to Jake's point, and a, a great story shows you the entire time. It does not tell you with cruddy exposition and and lazy writing. No, it shows you the entire time. I think that this show it it, it exceptionally it excels at that. I think that it does. I think as Kobe said, it hooks you the entire time. So what's more to love? You know, you can, you can, you can do better. I can I, do better. I, like how, I, I, I want things to be good. Like I don't shit on things for no reason. I like how DJ's uh, take on that was, oh, they like it more. Anthony's take on it was that, like, Kobe's a better reviewer. And my take was, why didn't invite Kobe? He just <laughs> stepped all over us. <laughs> Hey Kobe, uh, I'm, I'm like I'm like defeated. Podcast, right? Kobe has Kobe has in, has has since inspired me. My my soul <laughs> gem's all clouded right now. My soul gem is hot burning. Great, it's burning. I, I, love, I love this. I want to come back all the time. <laughs> I got this idea for podcast, and I I really need a host, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna review bad animes, right? And every week we're gonna watch a new bad anime, and then we're gonna review them. And then you could just, you know, be the whole MC and get everything together, and you know, rain us cats and make sure we do a good job. What, what do you think? What do you think about it? Uh, okay, mm, sold. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye, Jake. Bye. Bye, Jake. We're with Kobe. We're with Kobe now. <laughs> <laughs> My plan worked, Jake. <laughs> no, I've been replaced. Uh, that, that was a twist I didn't see coming. <laughs> have you guys reviewed Yuri on Ice on your sports anime thing yet? They have. Wow. It was like their that's, second episode, I believe. That's my favorite one. I gotta I got watch that. I gotta watch that. Uh, also, probably the only slice of life anime I've ever enjoyed. Because Yuri on Ice is, I mean, it's a lot of ice skating. But, you know, the <laughs> other parts, I actually liked that too, which would be rare. Which is rare. That's the only time I've was. Enjoyed. There were other parts other than ice skating? I mean, that's my favorite part about it is that ice skating is the main character, not Yuri. Hmm. Whenever they get on the ice, you're like, fuck yeah, ice skating. I've never felt that way in my life. Oh, uh, okay. So the, the next part of our podcast is we go into the currently airing anime that we chose to watch for the, I, I couldn't get it right last spring season, spring season, currently airing spring season. 
Uh, Kobe, do you know what anime we're watching? Uh, uh, Magical Girl Ore. Uh, do you think you yeah. can give a brief synopsis of Magical Girl Ore? Yeah, I've seen the first episode. Oh, so no. It's about this, oh, no. It's about this, this one girl who who's in love with her best friend's brother who's an idol right and so it's like it's very it's very tough for them to be to but he's an idiot also because he doesn't speak or something (laughs) (laughs) yeah that's right nailing it that's exactly what it is and then she comes home one day and her mom's like and there's this weird yakuza guy there who like who like speaks (laughs) with a speech impediment that i can't remember what it was (laughs) yeah he rolls his R's. So then there was that, and then and then the mom reveals, I was a magic girl, but now I'm too old. Now it's your turn. She's like, what? Like, huh? But then these the boyfriend gets kidnapped. Not the boyfriend. The the idiot dude idol gets kidnapped by a bunch of like weird thumb creatures. The and demons. demons. The squirrels. They're squirrels. The squirrel demons. <sighs> and and then so so she becomes a she gets the granted the power of a magical girl. But twist. It's a body of a big buff dude because obviously because like why would you not want to do this like and so it's so you got to be a buff dude fight things because you're it's tech it's it's structurally sound if you're a buff dude they're much so she, more after fighting yeah they're much more after fighting so then she fights the the demon creatures and then her best friend also becomes a magical girl dude because she's in love with the main girl she's like I I really love you oh, I, so, so I watched good. the second episode yeah too. I was like you so, watched the second episode yeah so and then that's so yeah, so what did I miss? Nothing. Oh, uh, nothing. You, 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 you didn't mention that I think there's there's another thing I want to add. I think the first episode, best one of the whole series. Agreed. Maybe. Um, it is uh, fucking awesome. It's got like subtle anime references in it and shit. It's so good. It's good. It's so good. I, I think I, I do agree. I think the first episode's the best episode in the series. I think the ca- I oh, think the good. karaoke I, episode is also really I got good. in and got out at like a perfect time. <laughs> All right, so, he's like uh, beating on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're going. No, they're going. <laughs> All right, well, well, Kobe, you're that's, in. That's, for, you're in for a ride, boy, because uh, we're going into the spoilers for the season finale of Magical Girl Ore right now. I'm so sad. So, it's over. so it, it, the oh, series shit. ended. Oh, so you guys are at the end. Yes. <laughs> Ready? <laughs> you ready? To know, you go from episode two to episode twelve. Are you? Are you ready? I'm so excited. Yeah, spoil it for me. Yeah. <laughs> They're back to being. I don't know. It uh, ended really lackluster to me. Yeah, it did. I was a little yeah. bummed out. Oh no, it did. The last one was like a mind fuck. I said in the last review that the was, was episode eleven of Magical Ore Ore was more of a mind fuck than all of Madoka Magica, <laughs> and it was. <laughs> It was. Is that true? Uh, uh, yeah. I don't think so. I think... So, I think Madoka Magica... He is being hyped. Some stuff I I saw coming, because it was, you know, typical writing, you know, storytelling tropes, stuff you're going to see coming. Other things surprised me in Madoka Magica, which is generally hard to do, but it did. Magical Google Orway is so fucking weird and crazy that it 100% succeeded in surprising me because it's just so batshit insane that i never saw any of it i had no i i just never thought of what happened i just never thought of that there's no was, way that would have crossed my mind like it's so crazy insane yeah, a lot of the stuff that happened in episode 11 we didn't uh i don't think any of us called at all oh no yeah i sure didn't <laughs> <Kobe> did. <laughs> <laughs> no so uh episode 11 revealed that the uh, the manager for them was actually the uh, the big bad the what? entire time. You know, it, it wasn't the, the bro- it wasn't the brother's best friend. It was I no. know. I know. Very I know. Fact, he's, he's a very king. king. In fact, he's Kokoro's boss. The uh, the Yakuza guy. He's his boss. <laughs> oh, right. right. That's pretty cool. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, fuck you guys for spoiling that for me. <laughs> Why did we do that? that was, I don't know. Why did we why do did that? You leave? Yeah, also, also, yeah. We're all to blame. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I, uh, you know, that's the fault of the booking. Um, Fortunately you know. for you, Kobe, it's no, um, it's no ultra dramatic reveal. Uh, it's no um, drama, it's, it's drama really a focused reveal. story. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's you really know. like it. It, re- it reveals to it reveals the the twist in a way that. The show would reveal a twist. Yep. Like if you were to 
get spoiled on any show, this one's probably the best one to get spoiled on. Yeah, I think just yeah. because um, it uh, it's just it, it's just it's not a very dramatic series. You know, it's not like you're getting spoiled on some ultra story based thing and it's ruined the whole experience for you. It, this is this is magical or right? Like yeah, yeah, but it's it's so <laughs> weird and so out there and like kind of like to the point that you wouldn't expect it to withhold like a twist like that. Yes. Yeah. Like very you wouldn't much expect so. it to need it. So it's like when it, when it's like when you see something like oh it's obviously that one dude's like the other guy in the band because like he's clearly evil. It's like I, it makes sense that it's it's because it's fun. So I wow. did call that it would be him. I knew it wouldn't really? be him. I thought it would be someone random or something like that. I knew it wouldn't be that guy, but I thought there's I thought they were gonna go beat the shit out of him and I, it was gonna turn out he was just a normal guy. I I thought for sure as well. I thought they were yep. gonna beat him up. I thought that'd be the fun. I thought that was gonna be. Uh, I thought it was gonna be hilarious. But double twist. It's the fucking man. <laughs> Manager, triple twist it's he's the fairy king like he's an actual like what oh my god so I'm like, don't blow don't put don't hit me don't hit me because uh one punch, you know, and, I'm, one punch and i'll die uh, <laughs> oh yeah he's gonna die in one punch too <laughs> so uh so the, the finale episode kind of picks up where we left off the manager says like you have to defeat me that way you guys become like immortalized as uh like magical girl idols and Saki kind of goes through I, again. You can, you can be ridiculous. You can be as ridiculous as that show is, but you have to stay ridiculous. I feel like the, the entire time, way yeah. because then they try to get you with this emotion. Like Saki is like, oh, but like your <laughs> morality of it I, all. I like you're my friend, and but you're doing horrible things. I know they're horrible, but you're still my friend, and I hate that you're making me do this. <laughs> and like it kind of tries to tug at you. But for me, I think I checked my phone, and like that was the first time, like since like episode five, I kind of just lost interest yeah. in the show. This one was, I I grew Jake. This one was kind of, I I started it, and I was like, okay, here we go. This is gonna be great. But yep. f- just just to follow the last episode, it was it did it it it, it had the unfortunate um job of following the last episode. I think yeah. that's what would happen. If this yeah. would have followed the ones the those mid season lull episodes. It had been okay, but following that one, that um, that's no good for it, for sure. Yeah. Had some funny jokes. Had some funny jokes. It wasn't necessarily the funniest episode in the entire series, you know. Yeah. This they, has been. This was the worst one in the out of the last like four or five. I think. Yeah, I, I agree. I I do like that the Sundari magical girl uh, <laughs> still has her like weird super tan old man magical <laughs> girl form. <laughs> I thought, she has a she has a special contract, so I thought she, I'm getting old. <laughs> she's like, I'm not gonna let all you youngins have the fun, have all the fun. I thought that was funny because she's like embracing. But how I liked old her character. Is. I liked them in the previous episode they were in more than when they were in this one. Yeah, I thought yeah. they had more to do in the last one. Yeah, this one kind of just ends on it wraps up. I guess it like this this entire episode was strictly like made to wrap up the series, <coughs> but. Like I guess when you have a series that's just nonsense, and there's not <laughs> exactly. much, there's not much to wrap up that you're kind of just wrapping up like nothing, and so it's yeah. I also thought if the series would have ended at the previous episode, it would have been very um, this series to do that, you know? Yeah. Oh yeah. With yeah. with the manager going, <laughs> well, it's time for you to fight me right now at this very moment, <laughs> and then it ends like, yeah. <laughs> and it never coming back, which yeah. was. This series is such bullshit that that would make so much sense for it to do that. Absolutely would. Um, again, like this last episode uh, really didn't do it for me. Um, again, it hasn't ha- it hasn't happened since the fifth episode with that really meta humor. But the uh, the series in general was enough to keep my attention, and I did look forward to watching it like every week. Um, not as much as I looked forward to watching Killing Bites every week, but. No. Uh, I did enjoy this series. Um, Ooh, I might have a, I might have a different opinion on that that little fact Ooh, there. Really? <gasps> really? Drama. Uh, so let them fight. <laughs> <laughs> Not again. Not again. We already did it. We that already. Was, that did was it. was that Pacific Rim. Let them fight. No, no that was Godzilla. 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 That was Godzilla. Yeah. I let them fight. Um, Which is oh, what what a badass when they actually fought. Oh my god. Uh, so. Anything you guys want to say about the series in general before we review it? 
Well, I think it was a series that had so much potential to it that, that that took a whimsical concept and then delivered on it wholeheartedly, embraced its weirdness, and knew exactly what it was from episode one. Um, the all the way into episode two. All the way into <laughs> episode two was just a masterpiece of character work, um, <laughs> and and it just it just really set the bar for for totally out there series. How did Kobe review that better than me by only watching two episodes? <laughs> he's Kobe, dude. He's our new he's our new boy. <laughs> ah, that's classic. That's hilarious. <laughs> I mean, I haven't even reviewed mine yet. And, uh, I know, I know. I was, like, I was like, uh, <laughs> well, you know, I was going to say that uh, this episode le- left a lot to be desired, um, especially following up, you know, previously as, you know, as uh, both Jake and, and DJ has kind of previously said, I think it was hard to follow. And uh, I was I was disappointed. That's what I'll say. I was disappointed. I'm a disappointed dad. This yeah, this episode was an eh, it was an eh ending, but um, this episode this this anime was not an anime that needed a punch in the face for an ending. It wasn't one that nope. needed me to be floored or anything like that. I I was already floored by its 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 um consistency uh and how it knew so well what it is. And I think this episode was weak, but it stayed true to. Um, itself, so like, like it, it stayed true to magical aura. You know, it wasn't like it was a shift in I uh, storytelling like or a shift in uh, a shift in the comedy. It was still just as funny. I thought. I feel like mm. it didn't stay true to magical girl aura. I felt like it was definitely like almost watching a different episode of an anime. Yeah, really? with how dr- how yeah, how, dramatic how dramatic it was. It was. Yeah. yeah, how dramatic like Saki's speech was. Then how like how the the tone all of a sudden became. Like more of them, like believing them, like believing themselves. I guess maybe if you see that whole last episode as like a parody ending. Of well, I like mean, a, of a magical girl show in general, then yeah, it kind of sticks. To hasn't it given order. us the 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 false direness before though? You know, like with the mom and stuff. You yeah, know? but like it, even that then was they were different cracking, though. Even then they were cracking jokes. Like the mom's like, yeah. I gotta go back to my home planet, and then it's like, that's not one of your, that's not a ba- <laughs> yeah, part of your backstory. And she... <laughs> I mean, I just, I didn't feel like it was out of place. It definitely was more. Eh, I didn't. Maybe I just didn't watch it with. I think because of the the whole scare with the mom, all the drama to me was. I knew it would be. It was fake again, you know, or. It didn't, you know, it wasn't the same with the mom where it actually, literally, like, she didn't actually die. <laughs> but, um, like, I was like, oh, they're just fooling us again. Like, I think that's how I saw it. So it didn't... I, mean, they I didn't, didn't take it, was it legit seriously. Drama. Yeah, I know. Yeah. But while yeah, I was okay. watching it, I was like, oh, they're fooling me again. Because when I watched the mom part, I was like, oh, my God, this shit is taking a turn. <laughs> and then it's like, fucking got you, right? So this yeah. time I was like, okay, it's not going to fucking get me. But then, you know, it just kind of... Ends. Mm-hmm. Why? <laughs> yeah. All right. So uh, we're going to go ahead and end spoilers now. Uh, welcome back. If you skipped the final portion of our podca- podcast with Magical Girl Ore, what the hell, man? I got like a weird thing in my throat. I can mispronounce like three words in a row. Hmm. Uh, so wow. uh, this is why I'm your replacement. I know. Dude, <laughs> is, I'm doing horrible at trying to defend my job right now. We took a vote. We took a vote. Uh, so, DJ, how about you uh, You start us off with our uh, review? All right. Here comes my review of Magical Girl Ore, this, the whole season slash series so far. Magical Girl Ore is a piece of postmodern humor um, and postmodern storytelling that you never, ever get to see in anime, which is really, really cool. The only anime I can think of that has any postmodernism whatsoever um, is is Keijo, uh, just off the top of my head, and I think this one succeeds a lot in a lot of the same ways that Keijo succeeds. It's got awesome meta humor. It's constantly referencing other animes in a cool, funny way. Um, it's taking specifically, it's taking um, <coughs> Magical Girl animes and turning them on their head, but it's also across the board referencing other animes, even deep, deep cuts like that. That it's hard to notice. I'm sure. We all missed a lot of references that probably were in there, um, just just 
based on the deep cuts that I do know were in there, I'm sure there's a lot more, which is like, th- that's just so rare in an anime that you get such a cool piece of postmodernism. That it's awesome. The meta storytelling, the references to other animes, it's so aware of what it is and what it wants to do. And it is, does not take itself seriously in any way. Um, it's just a fun ride the whole time. Um, and it's incredibly unique. And that's my favorite part about it is that this does not remind me of any other anime I've ever seen. I can't draw a good comparison to any other anime I've ever seen. It's so over the fucking top. It, I, it's just just great. Great. Awesome. Great. Better yeah. than Killing Bites. Yes. <gasps> so oh my I'm guessing gosh. that means your final rating of it is... A find? <laughs> a find. Absolutely. Um, this might be the best... This is the best anime we've watched on this podcast. Probably by a long shot. <laughs> I know. I know. He just said that. He just said that. And we just had this, a podcast this anime where we talked is about Madoka better Magica. Than Magoto, this anime is better than Madoka Magica. That's okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, my turn. How can you... It's so... It, it doesn't give a fuck. It's so good. Uh, my turn. And doing my best to not let what DJ just said affect my opinion on this show. Oh, Jake, I think you need a second to cool off. Yeah, I got it. I'm good. I'm good. I've been thinking about it. Take a walk, man. Take a walk. <laughs> Magical Girl Ore is a whimsical show that knows what it is. From <laughs> I just was stealing what Kobe said earlier. <laughs> my lines. <laughs> no, I, in all sense, Magical Girl Ore is an anime that is written by a person who loves... Not only Magical Girl anime, but anime in general. This is a person who has a deep connection with that type of world, and you can tell has a deep love for it. Many references are made to other anime, like DJ said, and a lot of classic tropes for the Magical Girl genre are turned on their heads in funny, uh, creative ways. Um, to, uh, to compare something that DJ said, DJ said he's never seen an anime similar to this, I'm going to say it right now, this is the Magical Girl version of One Punch Man. One Punch Man takes that overpowered character and exaggerates it tenfold and puts it in ridiculous situations where then he takes any dire situation and ruins it um, in a comedic way. And Magical Girl Ore does that in a similar fashion, where this world, this stuff is crazy and it's happening it's all this magical trope and then they solve it by pure violence and in funny ways uh the um the humor in it hits <coughs> when it when it stays true to itself when it does its magical girl um magical girl anime parodies but when it tries to do um tries to do two meta humor like ch- talking about anime studios that episode was bad then there's an and then a finale um, kind of fell flat because it feels, again, not like it's staying true to itself in general. Um, the episode, Every other episode, though, where the anime acts like the anime wants to be are fantastic and a fun watch to do. That being said, though, for me, this anime belongs in the recycling bin. <gasps> oh my, what? The, he said what? It belongs in the recycling bin. The... Uh, the overall feel to it is fun, and I get why I enjoyed it, and I get why some people enjoyed it. Will I recommend it to people? Probably not. Will I remember this anime a year from now? <laughs> Probably not. I'll Ooh, uh, like, fuck. The, it's <laughs> now you know how we feel, DJ. <laughs> no, the um again the char- like the characters are fun in this situation, but. Ask me three months from now who's the main character of Magical Girl or a I probably won't be able to tell you. I don't know her name now, Jake. <laughs> I, I love, love it. I love Saki. <laughs> All right, Anthony, remember. finish us up. Oh, I guess, Kobe, wait, Kobe, do you want to do a review on this? <laughs> no, <laughs> I do. No, you already did. No, no uh, I, I don't want to follow Kobe. No, I mean, I yeah, he'll go last. Sh- he'll go last, Anthony. He'll okay. go last. You already Ooh. did. He I'm didn't not say Ooh. anything and... Good. I'm just gonna ramble. One thing to to add to Jake's, <laughs> I think um, a big difference between our reviews is that I love meta humor. Um, this 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 anime is like a gut punch into all the shit that I love, which might be uh, why I like it so much. And it also might be. Man, man. 
if you, if you uh, and it might like be um I also haven't watched Keijo either, but just hearing about it, it makes makes me think I'll love it. Um, it also might me, you know, reflect on uh, Madoka Magica too, because I think that uh, that that's the opposite, where it's not all the stuff I like, but it's all the stuff that uh, that Jake certainly likes. So, but yeah, this is just Magical Gore is just all the shit that I love in a little ball. That's why I love it so much. All right, Anthony, you're up. Okay, so um, you know, not to. Not to r- repeat most of the themes that kind of we've heard, but you know, Magical Girl Ore, it, it it holds a special place in my heart because of the fact that it's it's a show that doesn't go through identity crisis. It knows exactly where it needs to be, and and even though it does have a few episodes that that really you know are lackluster, and they they really and truly didn't capture my attention as much as I had wanted them to I, I still do hold it in a in a pretty high light is it probably is it one of the funnier shows that I've watched yeah I, I definitely put it on the list is it the funniest show I've ever watched no absolutely not but it is it's a fun and wacky ride the entire time I think that um you know the characters are easily to you know easy to get generally invested in and I I, I was interested in watching this show every single week. Um, <laughs> will I recommend it to people later on in life? Eh, I might. I, I very well might. For me, though, this this show absolutely is is a find. I think that um, currently right now with it airing alongside with a, a few a few other shows, like this aired alongside Darling in the, in the Frog, correct? Yes. Okay, so I mean, like, you're talking about a few other shows that literally are just pound for pound, probably some of the best shows to be released in our current season. So, does Magical Girl Ori have a stacked competition? Absolutely. Absolutely. But was it a fun and wacky show to watch in the meantime? Absolutely. Put it on with your friends, put it on with your buds. I, I, I'm not going to change my opinion from what I kept saying every single time that we got done with watching an episode. If you weren't watching it with us, Go back and watch it. I, I thought it was hilarious. Maybe skip the finale if you if you want uh, some no. re- resolution. Watch the finale, and uh, you know it, it's a find. It's a find. It's a fun. It's a fun show to watch. I think this fucking anime can duke it out with anything that I've seen in a while. Like it's mm-hmm. just it's it's simple. It knows itself. That's it's funny as fuck. It's got squirrel demons. What more do you want? It's got, Co- I, I it's got an idiot guy who doesn't speak. Okay, Co- Kobe. Kobe too. reviewed it perfect. Okay, Kobe, <laughs> you got you have two episodes, uh, spoilers, and three reviews. You want to give a review on Magical Girl? Right? Yeah, because what I was all I will bring it back to is as someone who's only seen two episodes. Um, but I'm really amazed by that, to be honest with you, because really I agree with everything DJ said. Actually, that this is post. You know, uh, post here, post meta. Said? Not everything that DJ okay. said. I agree with the with the <laughs> part God. that DJ said that it's a lot of it's a lot of meta humor and and post anime humor. Um, and all of it's so smart and everything about that was engaging and funny and clever. And I love clever so much. Like I would I would say I love clever animes more so than any other genre of animes. But I asked myself why didn't I immediately go out and watch more. Like, this is something that I claim to love and something that I really thought I would latch onto so hard. But after two episodes, I was just like, okay, like, you know, what, what am I going to watch now? Uh, I could watch Magical Ore or I watch something else. But I didn't feel the need to, 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 to continue on with the episodes. And I think that's why I agree with Jake in the sense where it's a recycling bin show. Because it has all these elements that are great, that are hilarious, that's funny. But there's just something missing from it. That just really got me attached to it, um, and, but that's just based from two episodes. Maybe if I watch one more, I'd be completely on Team <laughs> DJ's side. But I, I never... no, I agree to a point. I think I think you could have uh, stronger characters. Some some people you get attached to more. I don't think it's perfect, but I mean, it's ah, that, that not a lot of animes that I watch do I think are perfect. So I think it's pretty damn strong comparatively to all the other ones. <laughs> it's, you're right, though. Uh, maybe I think that missing piece might be characters. I wish they were a lot stronger. I really do. Okay. Cool. Okay. Good. 
Good, good talk on Magical Girl Ore <coughs> and uh, finishing up that. So, with the end of Magical Girl Ore, we end our spring and we begin our summer season. So, uh, we are going to pick a new summer show completely based off the descriptions I'm going to give. Um, I'll tell you right now, I have a favorite, and I really want us to pick that one. So, uh... Does it have titties in it? No. I probably won't pick it. But there's one that does, and I... I, That one. I'm afraid. I already picked it. I don't want that one. Alright, so the first one I'm going to bring up is called Cells at Work. And you know the anime trope of turning everything into an anime girl? Sure. This, uh, this, uh, this is turning the human body into a, like, city and all the cells into, like, anime characters. And so <laughs> it, it takes the... It's basically an anime <laughs> about the human body. <laughs> what? Like, the trailer for it has, like, the white blood cell being, like, this albino guy wearing a white jumpsuit murdering, like, <laughs> bacteria. I've seen Osmosis Jones. How similar yeah, is this going to be? I'm thinking that. It's, it's anime Osmosis Jones. Ooh, you should have just started with that. <laughs> anime Osmosis Jones. Ooh. Anime yeah. Osmosis Jones. All right. What wait. is Osmosis Jones doing? What is the, like, what what is he doing? It's just, I don't know. Existing? <laughs> I, who is Osmosis who is Jones? Osmo- I don't know. I would have to talk to uh, who is Osmosis Jones? Chris Rock was Chris Rock the voice of Osmosis Jones? Yes, I correct. Was. Yes, David yeah. Hyde Pierce was the pill. Okay. Oh damn, Kobe. Yeah, yeah. This what what I Turns like Kobe. Kobe's the big uh, <laughs> David Hyde Pierce fan. Yeah, <laughs> um, who isn't a huge David Hyde Pierce fan? Frazier. I thought that was oh. Kevin Klein. Is it really? Oh. Yeah. Kevin Klein could have been. I'm sure he was up yeah. for it. He has the voice for it. Yeah, he does. Now I'm really afraid that it is Kevin Klein. No, it is It is definitely David Hyde Pierce. All right, so uh, this next one has tits in it, DJ, but I don't know I don't know how you, you'll feel about them. A, a group of three Yakuza failed their boss for the last time. After messing <laughs> up an important job, the boss gave them two choices. Honorably commit suicide or go to, get, or go to Thailand and get sex reassignment <laughs> surgery. <laughs> Okay. In order to become female idols. After a gruesome year-long training to become idols, they successfully debut with overwhelming popularity, popularity, much to their dismay. This is where their tragedy truly begins. This is Backstreet Girls. Oh, wow. Is, are they hookers? Is that what they mean by Backstreet? No, Ooh. they're, they're no, idols. They don't, they're it they're idols. Back, back okay. alley girls. Would yeah, I, I thought hookers. maybe they're back page girls, like back alley girls, or they're either they're that or they're a boy, boy band. Sex reassignment surgery boy band anime, or Osmosis Jones anime. We, we, there's more. I'll, con- I'll continue reading out, out uh, another couple choices. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. I'm just reviewing our, uh, our current uh, batshit crazy choices that we have. Um, also, I'd like to add, it is indeed David High Pierce. Yes! Hey, I know, I, I, looked it up. I looked it up, just to be safe. Um, this Thank one God. is called Yuragi So no Yuna-san. Um, I'm sure there's an English name somewhere. <coughs> uh, but this, uh, this hotel basically has spirits. And uh, Wait, what the fuck? Okay, no, here, let me, read, let me attempt to read this description. Fu Yuzura Kogarashi, it's a guy, has spirit abilities and has been possessed by ghosts since he was a kid. This has caused a lot of trouble in his life, but now he has learned to fight back against the evil spirits. Unfortunately, he now also is very poor and homeless and hoping for a happier, more normal high school life. In his search for housing, he he's introduced to a very cheap boarding house called Yuragi Sao, which <coughs> was formerly a popular hot springs inn. And so uh, it's so cheap because the house is haunted by the spirit of a high school student whose corpse was found there. And she is scantily dressed. Okay. So we got Danny corpse, Phantom anime. The corpse um, still there? Yeah, it's hanging out. It, there's two char- <laughs> she's two characters. She's the corpse and the ghost. <laughs> we got Danny Phantom rain anime. Rain right I'd also like to add no um, no, no, uh, no obligatory Hot Springs episode in Madoka Magica. Yeah, no. Yeah. I like that. It sounds it's like no this one's going to be... school roof either. This, uh, this, uh, it's also an etchy. This one's probably... Oh, is it? Yeah. This that one, one's an edgy? Yeah, the spirit the spirit one is. And she, Danny Phantom is an edgy? Okay. And then uh, the final one, I re- it bums me out because Attack on Titan Season 3 is airing the same season, so at least I get something good to watch between possible bad stuff. 
Uh, where is it? Oh, this one I want to pick just because the art probably won't look anything like the actual show. And this one's called uh, Hanabado. And it's... No, uh, no, no, no. Tachibana Kentaro is a high school badminton coach who has a lot more enthusiasm than some of the members of his very small team. One day we he can't... meets the quiet voice student Hatsaki Ayano, who is effortlessly physically capable and experienced in badminton. He tries to recruit her, but she seems to have no interest in the sport at all. Due to a series of circumstances, she eventually ends up joining the team. Coach Tachibana is determined that with her on board, they will be champions. You watch a fucking badminton. Anime we can't. We can't show. take this. We can't take the show away just, from Kobe. Yeah, <laughs> we can't. You're gonna steal this from me. I need to do this. I don't have a badminton anime in my in my repertoire. <laughs> you take something I love. I take something you love. <laughs> <laughs> Kobe said the, the magical gore it was a goddamn recycling bin. <laughs> Kobe, you're off the show. You're off the <laughs> fucking show. Eh? You take you take my role here. You take my badminton anime. I have nothing left here. I needed that one. Badminton. What about, uh, what, about uh, what about what about uh, high score girl? How about, what about high score girl? Did you see that one? No. Is that, what what sport is that? Uh, the year it's is 1991, and sixth grader Yaguchi Haruo only has video games to live live for. He's not popular in school, and neither he's neither handsome, funny, nice, or even friendly. The only thing he has going for him is that he's good at video games. One day at a local arcade, he plays Uno Akira and a fellow classmate who's a popular, smart, pretty, and rich girl that absolutely destroys him at Street Fighter 2. Did she play uh, John Lee? Uh, I don't know about you, Anthony, but I... I... I guess we could put it up there, but my vote for sixth grade r- romance anime is is no. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't know how I much just, input I have, picking, but I'm that's just, a hard pass. I'm just picking names. <laughs> that's a hard pass. <laughs> that's a hard pass. <laughs> I'm just you know. So uh, okay, out of the ones we talked about, because we don't want to go too long, much longer. Um, what uh, what are your, what are your guys' votes? I don't. Those neither of those sounded good. Especially on Anthony's. No. Oh, oh, oh! One more, one no, more. Give me one more. I know we're going too long. Anthony's like, let's make it longer, guys. All right. <laughs> man, be uh, man, long schmong. We're go. already at Lord of the Rings: Fellowship of the Ring. Let's go extended cut. Yeah. Ooh. Might as well go extended cut, guys. I usually go to bed before twelve. That's just this is. <laughs> <laughs> let's do Yuragi. I vote uh, Danny Phantom. Yeah, let's go. If we have to pick one of those, Danny Phantom sounds the best. I would have what? cells at work. I feel Osmosis like that, Jones. I feel like that is it, one. You wanted to go Osmosis Jones. I feel like that I, one my has, vote doesn't really matter, but I just no. <laughs> does Jake want to go Osmosis I want Jones? To go Osmosis Did Jones? We, because I feel like that I think one has the mid- most most either it's going to be good or it's going to be bad. I don't think we're going to hit a middle yeah. with that one. Yeah, we. Uh, I think me and DJ were pretty big on Magical Girl Ore last time, so let's watch no, us. No, we, we are we are a we are a <coughs> democracy here on Anime Dumpster Dive. Obi, which one should we make? Do well if if I choose Osmosa Jones, you're at a tiebreaker. So yeah, no, but you uh, you you have the you're the final vote say because you are uh, Hitler. Whoa, because I because I'm Hitler. I was gonna say uh, the the what is it the dictator, but I decided to say Hitler instead. Just a dictator that, would have been that's, better. That's better. <laughs> uh, out of those three, I'm sorry. The Cell Osmosis Jones Cell City sounds sounds better than Ghost in a House. Let's do it. All right. So we're gonna watch Cells at Work for next season. Cells at Work. So you know what that means like Kobe Bugs is life, that, but for cells that, that I'm that gonna means... watch the first two episodes and then come back for the end again and just see <laughs> yeah. what happens. Exactly. Uh, all right. Uh, yeah. Normally here at the end of our podcast, we uh, like to plug ourselves, but we'll go ahead and we'll do Whoa, that. Whoa, Jake. I don't do that at the end of any podcast, all right? But don't, don't put words in my mouth or plugs we'll, in my butt, all right? Let's go ahead and let's let Kobe uh, do it first. I don't want to follow, start plugging myself after DJ just said plugs in my <laughs> you butt. You plug yourself right now. 
Uh, yeah, so um, if you like me and you like my voice and personality, we run a channel on YouTube. You may have heard of that. Um, it's called Nerd Blaze, where we do a bunch of different videos, but our claim to fame is the premiere podcast, as Jake said at the beginning, but he didn't name it. It's called Anime Ricochet. We focus on sports animes, um, and we have a lot of fun, and that's on Nerd Blaze YouTube. We're also on Twitter, at the Nerd Blaze. What a good name, too. Yeah. What a good name uh, for that. Anthony, you want to tell them where they can find us? You can find us do it, on do it. Twitter. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Down in the descriptions below, we have all of our Twitter handles linked. You can definitely tweet at us. You can follow us here. Please do subscribe. And, Anywhere uh, a never bad listen. anime needs a review. Oh, God. That's where you'll find us. Jake, cut the ah, video. Future Jake. Future, future, future <laughs> Jake, you come back. Did you do this? Jake, cut it now. I, uh, I, I do promise. I, Kobe, I want to say, uh, I think for everybody here, that we really, really enjoyed having you on the podcast today. Absolutely. Oh, I had fun. This was, thank you so much for, for inviting me. This was, this was a blast. I, I was nervous gonna, that I wouldn't fit in with you guys. I would make him watch a bad one. You fit in just fine. I was going to say, I feel like uh, I definitely want to have Kobe back on, but judging by how our conversation with the Madoka Magica movie ended, I feel like the next time we have Kobe on should be when we talk about an anime that is near and dear to all of us. Yeah, after I get my PhD so that I can keep up with. <laughs> I mean, uh, called <laughs> a, a certain anime that I know we all have we all have some different varying feelings <laughs> on called uh, Fate Zero. Ooh. Ooh. No. I don't want to talk about Fate Zero. You it's guys, be... it's again. It's going to be. I'm crazy because I don't like it again. <laughs> That's what it's going to be. <laughs> yeah, but this time, DJ, there'll be three people again. Yes. So. Yeah. Damn yep. it. Damn yep. it. Damn yep. it. Yep. <laughs> no, we need to bring him on for a bad one. He needs to feel the fucking pain. All right. Chain. Handshakers two. That's what we need to bring him on. <laughs> handshakers. Is there harder. a handshakers two? Because fuck. Handshakers I'm not two. Watching it. A firm I'm not watching grip. It. And a steady shake. <laughs> watch, uh, I'm telling you, we gotta watch Demon King. Let's watch Demon King. Well, we do King need is, a good, we do handshake. need a bad anime to start next season off. So in like three weeks. Um, you saying you want to do Demon King Daimo for that week? Let's do it. Kobe, are you okay with being a special guest on Back to Back Podcast? <laughs> <laughs> no, sure. Dude, yeah. Do why you not? Have any real trash under your sleeve for the Kobe episode? <laughs> I've oh, been, that's very true. I've been using them, man. I've been throwing out my trash. I've been, I've, I wanted to get us going quick. Demon King Dino's yeah, bad. Give, give me your trash. I, oh, I want to see something really okay. trashy. Ooh, okay, okay. Maybe we should save Demon King then. Let's All save right. Demon King. We'll, we'll figure it out, and we'll figure out what we're doing. You let me know if there's a bad one. I'll be on here. We'll definitely let you know, and there's we'll definitely have you back. Find a bad one. I'll look for it. I'll find one. I'll find one right for for Kobe. Let's see you use okay. your fancy words to make that sound. <laughs> you won't. <laughs> Handshaker's soundtrack uh, really brings you into the world of this anime. But that, 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 that. I just want to point out that most of our reviews are, you know, the music goes, and Kobe's like, well, if you look at this, at the angle of the world is this, and we're going, no, but I love it. I, I, I love it. it. I don't know, but I tried to channel you with my Magical Girl Ore review. <laughs> great, great. Happy to be here. All right. All right. Uh, if you if you listen to this whole podcast, thank you so much for listening. Um, you guys, I'm not any... crazy, right? If you listen to this whole podcast, I'm not crazy, right? Uh, if you have any parting words, go ahead and get them out now. But uh, one day, <laughs> somewhere out there, beneath the pale anime, he said he said it best. <laughs>